you're watching Capital One Bowl Mania. Welcome to the Quick Lane Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. It is the only college football game in the country, and it's all going down here in Detroit, Michigan at Ford Field. New Mexico State Aggies making their way onto the field, an independent coming on at 6-6, six and six, taking on the Bowling Green Falcons out of the MAC at 6-6. Six and six. Who's going to get to their seventh win of the season? What's up, everybody? Welcome inside the booth alongside my partner, former Buffalo Bills running back. He's Rini Angoli. I'm John Schriff, and Tara Talmadge will join us momentarily. All right, Rini, when you think of bowl games, you always got to wonder how badly do teams want to be here? And after talking to both head coaches, it is clear this, it's going to be a battle today. Yeah, for all you Scrooges out there that say there's too many bowl games, they're not important, tell that to these two programs and these players. They are excited. They haven't been to a bowl game in a long time. Both programs, they're ready to go today. Now, we're going to feature two outstanding quarterbacks. First for Bowling Green, Matt McDonald, he does everything for them. Yeah, as Matt McDonald goes, so does Bowling Green. You know, when Matt McDonald throws for over 247 yards a game, they're four and two. When he's under 247, two and four. He's got a strong arm, very intelligent, reads defense, spreads it around nicely to a plethora of wide receivers. The one issue Bowling Green's had this year is they had a problem running the ball, which hurts them. So today, look for Matt McDonald to throw the ball and throw it often. For New Mexico State, they are led by their dual threat quarterback, Diego Pavia. Yeah, Diego Pavia from that Liberty game really took over this program. The next week against Valparaiso was excellent. Throws a very nice ball. He's very athletic, a former wrestler, so he's got great balance, can extend the play. When he gets out of the, outside of the pocket, he can make plays spontaneously. That's something the Bowling Green defense has to watch for today. He's that explosive of an athlete. Who's ready to have some fun today? One team's going to get to their seventh win of the year in the quick lane ball. New Mexico State, Bowling Green. Hey, Santa, can you bring us a good game today? Opening kick coming up after this. Here in Detroit, Michigan, it is time now to welcome in the third member of our crew, Tara Talmadge. And Tara, what a turnaround for New Mexico State this year. Absolutely, guys. This is their first bowl game since 2017. Just their second bowl appearance, though, in the last 61 years. And like you said, a turnaround this season. They started out 0-4. And, and not only did they lose those first four games, but they kind of got blown out. However, it was after the Wisconsin game when they lost 66 to 7 that they really started to turn things around. They won four of the next five games, outscoring opponents 147 to 80. And the last two games, they absolutely dominated. So they're going to try to keep things rolling here today against Bowling Green. And I got to say, after talking to the Aggies, they were telling me that, hey, after the turnaround we've had this year, we are capable of anything. Tara, good stuff. And if you have not seen New Mexico State this year, led by head coach Jerry Kill, they are a fun team to watch. Well, and Jerry Kill told us when we were talking to him, the team really surprised him as well. First year, obviously, taking over the program. Usually takes three years into that fourth year. So he said, yeah, pretty surprised that we ended up with 6-6 six and six record and got to a bowl. Pleasantly surprised. And he said he's really happy with his, with his team this year and their, their effort. And, New Mexico State has won the toss. They elect to defer. We are underway here in Detroit. Bowling Green will take the opening kickoff. Jalen Embry trying to get over to that left side. He'll be dragged out of bounds at the 25-yard line, a return of 18 yards. And we'll see the Falcons offense come out on the field first, led by Matt McDonald. Yeah, you know, we talked about Matt McDonald in the open. So we'll see what Scott Leffler decides to do here. And, you know, in talking to, to Scott this week, Wanted to get some more running game going, but so far it's all Matt McDonald's. We look at his season numbers, 22 touchdowns, eight interceptions. He's had a nice year directing this offense. In the backfield, Teron Keith will get the start. They call him Mr. Fix-It. He can do a little everything at the running back spot. They fake the handoff. First play of the game from scrimmage is complete. Odu Hilaire. Now that's 35 straight games with a catch. That dates back to his time with Alabama A&M. That's impressive. And you hear announcers talk about arm talent all the time. It gets probably overused. Matt McDonald just showed you some arm talent. That's a deep out to Hilaire from the far hash. Puts it on the money to start this game. Bowling Green working out of the shotgun. Christian Sims, the tight end, in motion. Handoff. Trying to run over defender. That's Teron Keith. 
They say he's not the fastest, not the strongest, but somehow comes out the way to make it get, get it done. Picks up seven. It's from Deland, Florida. That's a cent Central Florida kid out of in the Orlando area. Just he's a football player, John. He makes plays. He catches the ball well out of the backfield as well. A lot of winning touchdowns this year for Teron Keith. Second and three from their own 49. McDonald, quick throw to the outside, bobbled and incomplete, was trying to find Keith out of the backfield. And just as I say, he's got good hands, it gets dropped. But that's one there where Mac McDonald, I think, just a little pumped up, right, to start this bowl game. A little bit uh, too much sauce on that one for Keith to handle. And it's understandable. This is a beautiful venue, home to the Detroit Lions. This is basically a home game for the Bowling Green fans, a short drive Awesome atmosphere here the day after Christmas. Glad you could join us here on ESPN. And a nice, you know, 71 degrees inside Ford Field. Play clock's down at four, third and three for the Falcons. McDonald pump fakes will pull it down, rolling out to his left. We'll put some air under it. And that's picked off. Intercepted. Trevor Brohard, the linebacker, just read that one and picked it off. Brohard is the heart and soul of this defense. Very passionate, one of the leaders, and that's the problem there. So Matt McDonald kind of throws this into traffic. You got two receivers, kind of scramble drill, but when you do that, look how many white jerseys, how many defenders are there, and Brohard, the Mike linebacker, goes up and makes an outstanding interception. Gets the takeaway for the Aggies. Look at that sideline for New Mexico State. Fired up. Just their second bowl game in 61 seasons at New Mexico State. Here's Diego Pavia on the field for the first time for the Aggies. Fakes the handoff. Here comes the pressure, and he gets rid of it. You got to be careful because Bowling Green will get after you all day long. Yeah, they're going to put pressure on Diego Pavia because they want to keep him in the pocket, get him uncomfortable, get him off his spot. That time, they get after him right away. Defensive coordinator Eric Lewis says, we're gonna set some pressure, and they did. Giovanni Jones in the backfield to the left of Pavia. Four wide receivers for New Mexico State here on second and 10. Jones gets the carry. A gain of two up the middle. I mean, Jones is one of their bigger backs, more of a downhill guy. 6'2", 225. Tulsa, Oklahoma, very good between the tackles. Although he's got some quickness, too. Don't be surprised if he gets outside. He can turn the corner. We talked about the turnaround in the open by Tara. 0-4 to start for this New Mexico State team. Finish 6-2. And, and Diego Pavia, the big reason why they are here in a bowl game. On third and eight, well, it looks like movement up front. Here comes the penalty flag, our first of the game. Start. Offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty, third down. Now that's Jess Servinsky. He is actually the backup referee. He was called in. He's from Midland, Michigan, about two hours away on Christmas Day. And that's because the referee, Michael Mothershed, who was supposed to be here, missed his flight. So, Michael, if you are watching this game, man, you are certainly missed. You spent 28 years as a referee in the Pac-12. I know you are retiring. We wish you well in the future and all you've given to college football. Penalty backs him up, third and 13. Pavia trying to take a shot deep. He's got a man, and it's complete. Justice Powers, he was double covered, got past the defense. A huge pickup on third and long. They get 42. And Powers, 6'4", 185, one of those long wide receivers that can run. They got a couple of them on that roster, and he just goes by Deshaun Jones, the corner, and a good ball by Diego Pavi, and that's a huge play on third and long. I forget the safety. Chris Bacon was supposed to be there on help, and he wasn't there. Into Bowling Green territory. Pavia will hand it off to Jones, and that is blown up in the backfield. 
The Falcons were all over that one. A loss of three. Jordan Anderson and Trent Sims both there. And Anderson's one of those three-time all-Mac guys from that safety position. Comes up and runs support. Love to see that out of your safeties. Stacked wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Second and 13. Quick pass. Bryce Childress is tripped up. A short gain. It'll bring up third and long. Only picked up four. Yeah, and, that, and that's really what New Mexico State was trying to do there, is they're going to go with some tempo. They're trying to get to a manageable down a distance here. Look at this formation out of the Aggies on third and nine. Pavia, spread formation. He's going to try to pick it up with his legs, and he dives forward for the first down. We said he's a dual-threat quarterback on third and nine. He gets 10. Well, and you love the look, right? You, get, you spread it out. You got offensive linemen all over the place, lined up in wide receiver positions on the line of scrimmage. It just gives you space, right? So when you got an athlete like Pavia, you get that space, and you say, just find your hole and go get it. So now that's two big third down conversions on this drive alone for New Mexico State. The last two games of the year, this Aggies offense has really started to found their magic. Star Thomas now in the backfield at running back behind Pavia. First and 10 from the 20. Thomas gets a touch. And he'll pick up five on first down, J.B. Brown. The guy for Bowling Green to bring and, him down. And I tell you, whether it's Jamani Jones or Star Thomas, they're both about 225, 230. They'll get behind their pads and get after you downhill. And when you can pick up five yards on first down, it keeps you on schedule ahead of the chains. Jerry Kill is one of the most respected coaches in all of college football. He said he would only come back for this job if it was the right opportunity. He feels like New Mexico State is a place he can win. They call him Mr. Fix-It, right? Everywhere he's gone, he's turned around those programs. Second and five, David the man in motion. They fake the handoff to him. Pavia throwing on the run. He finds Thomas spinning. End zone. Touchdown. New Mexico State's on the board first. A 15-yard touchdown pass from Diego Pavia. And this Aggies offense looks good. And that was a true RPO, run pass option there out of Diego Pavia. You see him put it in the belly, then he reads the defensive end as he steps up. As Diego Pavia steps up in the pocket, draws defenders, drops it to Star Thomas. And that New Mexico State offense looking good early. Ethan Albertson on to attempt the extra point. New Mexico State with a 7-0 lead here in the Quick Lane Bowl. Get the takeaway and you turn it into points. Couldn't ask for a better start for New Mexico State. They're excited in New Mexico. Aggies lead it early, 7-0. College football playoff semifinals Saturday, December 31st on ESPN and the ESPN app. First at 4 Eastern, it is two versus three. Michigan taking on TCU. Then it's Georgia, the number one, taking on number four, Ohio State. The winners will play Monday, January the 9th on ESPN. And we had TCU earlier in the year, you know, against SMU and a team that's just gotten better each and every week. So excited to see TCU make the playoff. So New Mexico State comes up with the interception. They pay it off with a touchdown on their first offensive drive, up 7 to nothing here in this quick lane bowl over Bowling Green. Nick Mosley is the deep man. But it's going to be Jalen Embry returning this one. Avoids a defender and is brought down around the 25-yard line, a 21-yard return. Well, it's the day after Christmas, so let's go under the tree with Santa, see what kind of presence he's bringing to both teams. And we talked about this in the open. They both want to be here so badly. For Bowling Green, their first bowl game since 2015. New Mexico State, first time since 2017. Well, and you see the name Carl Brooks there for, for Bowling Green. Just an All-American gets after it. And then for New Mexico State, we talked about Diego Pavia. Their defense has played well as also getting after it. 27 sacks as a team and really good pass defense for New Mexico State.
On the run, McDonald throws on the money. Completes to his tight end, Christian Sims, for a gain of 13. Scott Leffler, in his fourth season as the head coach, this is his first bowl game. And we talk about turnarounds from New Mexico State. I mean, he has done an, an incredible job. When he got here, the defense and offense ranked almost last in the country, and now he's in a bowl game. Yeah, plus four and plus two. He's just gotten better every year he's been there, doing a nice job. On the ground again, they pick up a couple on first down. All right, so for Matt McDonald, through an interception, his first drive, what's the key to settling down? Well, and he's an experienced quarterback. He'll flush it. you got to just forget about it. He just threw it where he shouldn't have. There was too many defenders there. But he's got a lot of weapons, especially tight ends. We saw Christian Sims make that catch a play. Oh, that's the 75th reception for that tight end group for Bowling Green this year. Very talented. Mr. Fix-It back in the game. Teron Keith at running back. On second and seven. Handoff is to Jamal Johnson, and that is red. A loss of two. Chris Ojo, the linebacker, knew that right away. Uh, just, you know, let's chalk that up. 102 tackles on the season now for Chris Ojo. I mean, he gets after it. Will linebacker, you know, he's played every position. Middle linebacker, outside linebacker. He's a great pass rusher as well. He used to be kind of that rush defensive end can play in space, can do it all. NFL caliber player, Chris Ojo. He's going to get a look on Sundays. After the two-yard loss, it brings up third and nine from the 40. Here comes the pressure from the Aggies. McDonald's got to get rid of it, avoids the rush to his left. He's got daylight. He's going to take off with his legs. Matt McDonald, and then a hit out of bounds. Here come the penalty flags. That was Dylan Early, the safety, who hit him late after a gain of 11. Yeah, and now more flags because his offensive linemen are over there upset, rightfully so. We'll get a look at it. It was definitely late, and you got to hope Matt McDonald's okay. You don't want to see him get hurt on a play like that, and he's still down on the play. And it was great recognition by McDonald. The blitz came. Good job picking it up as he rolled out of the pocket. Nothing but green turf to his left. He picked up that first down and it takes the late hit. Now you got to remember, McDonald is also coming off of a concussion in his last game. Let's take a look at this last play, McDonald rolling out. Yeah, and it's a great recognition by McDonald. Now he's going to get the first down. He's going out of bounds. Yeah, and you just, you know, he goes low. Does Dylan early the safety. And it's clearly a late hit. You just can't do it. And really, it's, it's, and you've talked about it, John, right? It's not necessarily the hit, but it's the head hitting the ground on a low hit like that for Matt McDonald. And we asked Scott Leffler about McDonald coming off a concussion. He said, that game was a month ago. We practiced recently this past week. It was like a game week for us. He has looked really good. But now the backup, Camden Orth, is in the game with McDonald being tended to. Yeah, and they'll, they'll go through all the protocols with Matt McDonald, make sure he's okay, but... Camden North, another big quarterback, 6'2", 230, good arm strength as well. On first down, they give it to Keith. No gain on first down. And, you know, I talked about the rushing attack of Bowling Green. It's a team that's only averaged a touch over 100 yards rushing a game as a team and something they need to get better at. Something Scott Leffler said, we will address it in the offseason. Of course, Terry on Stewart, one of the best running backs in the MAC. They lost him this year, didn't play at all, which did not help. Empty backfield for Orth. And we got movement up front. Here's the penalty flag. Offside. Defense number 10. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's defensive end Lazarus Williams for a call for the offsides. Yeah, we'll get a look at it here. A couple guys actually jumped, but Lazarus is going to get the call. And this is right here. If you're the offensive line for Bowling Green, it's an attitude thing, right? You got to say, we're going to get after it. We're going to pin our ears back. We're going to get a running game going today. Fake the handoff, throw is complete. Austin Osborne, and Osborne has the first down. So the first throw from Camden Orth is complete, a gain of 10. It's Scott Leffler said it's good news to have Austin Osborne back. He had a shoulder injury. He's back. He's the true number three receiver for this team. And just a nice little sit route. Good job by Camden Orth. Put it on him and let Osborne turn up and get that first down. 
The junior from Gainesville, Florida, called into action because the starter, Matt McDonald, was hit out of bounds. He is still being looked at. Jason Patterson, the man in the backfield now. They fake the handoff to him. Orth scanning the field, and he's going to get brought down. Sterling Webb, the defensive tackle, bringing him to the ground for a three-yard sack. And that's just good coverage in the secondary by New Mexico State. Orth had some time, but the pocket eventually collapses as he steps up. He's going to go down with the sack. And just good strength by Sterling Webb, the freshman, to just get off the block as Orth climbs the pocket to get there for the sack. Under six minutes to play here in this first quarter. Bowling Green on their backup quarterback, second and 13. Patterson trying to get through, just tripped up inside the 30. Man, if he could have got by that one defender. Yeah, good cut by Patterson. Square those shoulders up on that sweep, get north and south, and you said just got tripped up. If he could stay on his feet, he had a chance to take that to the house. What a response by Bowling Green. Interception your first drive, you give up the touchdown, you're down seven, nothing. Offense moving the ball, but now a big third and seven. Yeah, and you lose your starting quarterback, and Camden North has come in and done a nice job thus far. Orth looking left the whole way, setting up the screen, and that one goes nowhere. He found Hilaire, but the defense was waiting. And they tried to run a little bit of a tunnel screen, but it just kind of looked out of sorts, and there's the safety, Dylan Early there. Andre Selden, the nickel was in on that as well, number eight, and just read it perfectly. Read and react, and that's what New Mexico State did there. Very active safeties. They're very good in the back end. A lot of depth in their defensive secondary. So this would be a season long for Mason Lawler. 49-yard field goal attempt, his longest 45 this season. Snap is clean, kick is up, Lawler just short, no good. So Bowling Green puts together a big drive, but comes away with no points. Yeah, you would have loved to have gotten some points there, just a little bit out of Lawler's range, but they moved the ball offensively. You see Scott Leffler checking in on his quarterback, Matt McDonald. We will be back to Detroit after this. Quick Lane Bowl is brought to you by Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center. Your go-to for oil changes, tires, brakes, the whole nine yards. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? You are looking at pictures of a Falcon Christmas. I mean, this is really why college football is so amazing. Yeah. You get the team together, young kids from the Bowling Green community, bringing them toys, bringing them holiday cheer on the Christmas time. Bowling Green, congratulations. Job well done in the community. You'd love to see that. Two great programs. Good stuff. New Mexico State with a 7-0 lead over Bowling Green here in this quick lane bowl. New Mexico State with their se second offensive possession. Well, it looks like this is good news for Bowling Green. Matt McDonald on the bike, trying to stay warm. Let's see if we will see him back in this game. Handoff is to Amante Watkins. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. So McDonald was hit late out of bounds on the last drive. Was in the medical tent all throughout break. He has just come out. He was on the bike. He's trying to stay warm. Yeah, he looks good right there. So yeah, I'd love to see his helmet by him. Um, so we'll, we'll see here when they get the ball back. But he's looking pretty good right there. It looks like he's going to get a ball and start throwing. They actually say that last play was a loss of one, so second and 11. Jamani Jones back in the game at running back. Pavia rolling out. Sitting down is Cordell David. Found that soft spot in the zone. Good run after the catch to pick up a first down. And David's another one of those long receivers, 6'3", 6'4". There's a few of them for New Mexico State, but that's what Diego Pavia can do, right? You roll him out, 
you have to respect the ability for him to keep the ball and run. Defenders draw to him. Good patience by Pavia as he puts it to David there on that right sideline. Under three minutes to play here in this first quarter. Three wide receivers for Pavia. Well, hand it off, making a cut is Jamani Jones. And a good pickup on first down will get four. I tell you, though, if you're a New Mexico State fan, you got to be thrilled with the emergence of Diego Pavia. Because, you know, first and foremost, if you're going to turn a program around, it starts with that quarterback position. You got you got to have a guy there that can make plays, that can lead the team. And, you know, I talked about it earlier. He was an All-State wrestler, right, in high school. Very competitive, very athletic. Just has that chip on his shoulder. Just kind of has that DNA that you want for a winning quarterback. In the last two weeks alone, last two games for New Mexico State, Pavia has 11 touchdowns. Second and six, trying to set up the screen, and that goes nowhere. Jordan Anderson coming up from his free safety spot to bring down Brady. I mean, that's an outstanding play. Watch Anderson, he's gonna shut the block. Read it, shut the block, and then make a tackle as well. I mean, you can't do it any better than Jordan Anderson did right there. And he's a Detroit, Michigan guy. He's a homegrown right here, playing in front of the hometown. You know he's excited for this one today. Third and 12 from their own 45. Aggies pick up the blitz. It is batted down by Carl Brooks. 6'4", 300. He is the best pro prospect on the field. Yeah, I always say this. Don't be fooled by these big defensive linemen wearing, like, number 11 because he's every bit of 6'4", over 300 pounds, and he plays defensive end for Bowling Green. He's going to be a three technique in the NFL. He's going to slide down, play more of that hand on the ground defensive line position, but he's a good one. Uh, we're going to call his name out a few more times today. I'm going to go on a limb. So Jalen Embry is the deep man. George Eberle will punt things away for New Mexico State. Everly just does get that one away. End over end kick. We'll check up at the 20. We'll take a good roll for New Mexico State, and they will down it at the 15. So the Bowling Green defense steps up, forces the punt under a minute to play here in this first quarter. Aggies up 7 0. Mexico State with a 7-0 lead over Bowling Green. Let's send it down to Tara, who's got more on starting quarterback Matt McDonald. Well, I've been watching him since he came off the field. He was in the tent for a little bit. Coach Leffler went in there. Not sure exactly what happened, but when he came out, Matt McDonald got on the bike. He's been walking around a little bit. Started throwing the ball, just, I think, testing his arm. And now it's clear he's not going back in the game right now. That's not to say that he's going to be out for the remainder of the game, but right now he will be sitting out. All right, thanks. Keep monitoring that, Tara. On the first play here, they will hand it off to Jason Patterson. All right, this was the second drive of offense for the game for Bowling Green. Let's take a look at how McDonald got banged up. There's a late hit from the safety, Darren Early, right here. So the hit was low, but it's really that the back of that head hitting the ground. You know, that I think that's the issue. And you see him immediately hold his head. And you talked about it, John. He was had a head injury earlier this season. So you got to take precautions. And Bowling Green's going to, and Scott Leffler's going to, no doubt about it. Um, and it's just it's unfortunate. Hopefully he can get back in this game, but we'll see. Handoff is again to Patterson. And a nice second effort. Picks up five yards for the first down. All right, so this is the third drive of the game for Bowling Green. First drive, interception. Second drive, it was 10 plays, but they missed a field goal. Got to start putting points on the yeah, board. Yeah, and, and, you know, and a good sign is a couple run plays to start this drive, getting some push as we're going to end this first quarter. So especially with Matt McDonald out, if he can just try to win that line of scrimmage, get some push, and get some running game going, that's going to help Camden North out a lot. New Mexico State with the only touchdown in that first quarter, a 7-0 lead. We'll be back for the start of the second after this.
Five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the app. The Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, it's going to be filled with orange. Number six, Tennessee, takes on number seven, Clemson, in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. So this was just a few minutes ago. Matt McDonald going back inside the injury tent as the medical team continues to check on their starting quarterback, Matt McDonald. Camden Orth, the backup, in for his second drive as Jason Patterson will get the carry here on first down. And you notice with Matt McDonald, helmet nowhere in sight because if the helmet's there, he's going to put it on and try to get back in the game. He's that type of player. They have to protect him from himself because he's a competitor. And Scott Leffler told us, in their last game, November 22nd against Ohio, Matt McDonald took a big shot in that first quarter. They feel like that's when he was concussed, but he stayed in the game didn't tell because McDonald didn't tell anybody. Yeah. They said they started noticing things from McDonald that he was doing uncharacteristically in the third quarter. They eventually pulled him from the game. Scott Leffley was not happy with his quarterback, and that's probably why they're also so closely monitoring McDonald. On second and six, tight end Harold Fannin. He has been banged up dealing with a knee injury in practice. Dropped three, pra three passes on Friday, and his head coach said, it's time to overcome some of these bumps and bruises and Fannin with a good reception there. Yeah, and, and, and Fannin just kind of beat up, right? The season has taken his toll on him. Got to get some things cleaned up in the offseason, but he's a tough kid out here playing. Empty backfield for Orth on third and five. A four-man rush, good protection, plenty of time, and Orth is on the money. Completes to Christian Sims, his tight end, 16-yard pickup. You got to credit that offensive yeah, you line. You said it, Parker. Great clean pocket for Camden Orth. Great time, and he scanned the field. He went left, right, and then came back left to his receiver. Good job to his tight end, Christian Sims. Puts it on him. That's a good third down conversion for Bowling Green and Camden North. Perfect. Four of four to start this game for Camden North coming on in relief of Matt McDonald. Here comes the pressure. Aaron and out. McDonald, his excuse me, Orth, his receiver didn't even see it. Hilaire was kind of looking up for the ball. Cyrus Dumas there in coverage. Yeah, good coverage on the back end. And we talked about it, you know, and talking to defensive coordinator Nate Dryling for New Mexico State. He said, listen, we have a lot of depth in the secondary. It's a strong unit, a lot of experience back there. The corners and safeties all can run. And it shows in that they're only giving up 183 yards a game in uh, passing yards. It's pretty good. You also notice from the Aggies defense, when they give Orth time, he can make that throw. They pressured him that last play. On the ground, scooting through the hole is Patterson. He'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Brings up third down after a gain of seven. Yeah, good quickness through the hole by Patterson there. And, and the thing I like, excuse me, it's Jamal Johnson. The thing I like is it gets it back to a manageable third and short here. Back to the ground. This is Johnson met right at that first down marker. Where do they spot it? Uh, he's going to have it. He had to get to the... 48, excuse me, 43, he got it there, and that's a first down. Scott Leffler told us his run game has not produced much, but so far today, they've been coming up big. I like the way the running backs are getting behind their pads, finishing off runs, it doesn't matter which one's in there, and they're getting good push by that offensive line. That's a good sign if you're a Bowling Green fan. So you got to wonder if replay is looking at the spot. So they did an expedited review, that's called. We talked to the replay uh, official Jim Labore before the game, Pac-12 crew. They do a lot of expedited replays. Remember, in college football, they review every play. But that's a, a straight expedited where they then call down to the referee and tell them, no, no, the knee was down, move it back. He's short, it's fourth down. I wish every review was that quick. I mean, this Pac-12 crew, they're good. And, and no doubt here, Scott Leffler's going for it here. Yep, you saw him say, we're going for it. 
Fourth and inches. Fannin and Keith in the backfield. Fannin, the tight end, lined up as a fullback, and we've got a penalty flag. False start. False start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Once again, that's Jeff Servinsky. He was called into action. He's a Big Ten official. That's because our regular referee, Michael Mothershed, was not able to make the flight due to weather. We've all had rent into weather this week with flights. Uh, Michael Mothershed, unfortunately, not able to be here with his crew. And he's retiring after this game. Man, we yeah. wish him the best. And you saw big Cam Stewart there. You just got to hold your water there on fourth and inches. Now it forces you to punt. Just that's an unforced error that drives coaches nuts right there. So Sam Sir on to punt for Bowling Green. Lawrence Dixon will call for the fair catch and will make the catch at the 19-yard line. We will step aside here in Detroit, New Mexico State, with a 7-0 lead here in the second quarter. Welcome back to Detroit, the Quick Lane Bowl. Let's take a look at the Progressive Bowl Challenge Cup standings. Now, the Bowl Challenge Cup is awarded the conference with the best winning percentage in the postseason. And you see number at six, Conference USA. New Mexico State moving to Conference USA next season. It is a huge move for the Aggies, moving from independent to becoming well, part of a conference. And Jerry Kill told us he was only taking this job at New Mexico State if they were going into a conference. He knows how important that is. It'll pay dividends for them in the future for sure. Demonte Watkins will start. Gets the carry, tries to run over that right side. Gets the edge. Oh, just runs over Chris Bacon. Hit the weight room. Well, that's a 10-4, 100-meter guy there and Amonte Watkins. And he turned the corner in a hurry and finished his run. A gain of 10 on first down. Almost picked off. That would have been six. Jordan Olotic. Olotican, oh my goodness. Yeah, he jumped this route, read it perfectly. Just couldn't hold on. If he did, he had an easy six. Yeah, sits on it, squats nicely, breaks on the ball, just can't. Make the interception. Second and 10. Pavia has time. One on one coverage finds his receiver in Bowling Green territory. That's Jonathan Brady, the freshman out of Las Vegas, picking up 30. Yeah, Bishop Gorman High School played pretty good football there at Gorman. Nice corner route by Brady. And an even better pass by Diego Pavia. Just great route and a good ball by the quarterback. Just an easy pitch and catch. As someone who lives in Las Vegas, a lot of football talent comes out of Las Vegas you Valley. Think? Yeah, yeah. Good football there for sure. Bishop Gorman, man, they just produce stars. First and 10, Pavia on the run, tiptoeing the sidelines. Cordell David completes the catch. A gain of seven. Yeah, and he had a high low there. He had Brady running a corner out again, but to this side of the, to the right side of the field, could have went there, goes underneath to David. And you see, that's Tony Sanchez right there. Former Gorman coach, also former UNLV head coach. Coach is the wide receiver, so uh, might be a little pipeline from Bishop Gorman to New Mexico State with Tony Sanchez, also an alum of New Mexico State, so a lot going on there. Second and three from the Bowling Green, 34. On the ground they go with Watkins. No, keeper by Pavia, and he just gets leveled. Here come the penalty flags. I mean, you almost feel like that. The, the, the defense said it's almost retaliation for going at our quarterback out of bounds and there's no doubt Pavia was going to slide there and Chris Bacon just came up and hit him clearly going to be they're, they're going to look at it for targeting remember so he's a def once he begins to slide he's a defenseless runner okay 
any forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless runner is going to be targeting. Penalties enforced half distance to the goal line. The previous play is under further yeah, review. Yeah, I, I, I saw enough, partner. I think this is going to be targeting for Chris Bacon. I think he's going to be gone. Remember, a runner is not defenseless until he goes into his slide. Here's the question I have for you. Doesn't matter did that he, he slid late. <laughs> Go ahead. Did he hit him with the shoulder? He did. But I think the shoulder was to the head and neck and, and, uh, area. I think it was forcible. I think you have an indicator that he lunged into him, and he's defenseless. So I, I think you have all the criteria you need there for targeting. Now, it's hard. Listen. So Bacon did not hit him with a helmet. Correct. And, be, but and they're looking at Pavia as a runner. Correct. Well, if they're looking at him as a runner, then it's not going to be targeting. Correct. Now, to me, he gave himself up. Now, I get it. It's hard for the defensive player. So if replay says he gave himself up late and he's not defenseless, then you're not going to have targeting. If they After deem he was the defenseless, review, he's targeting. No so targeting. there you go. Number three can stay in the ball game. The late hit is enforced half the distance to the goal line and includes an automatic first down. So yeah, listen, they kept the late hit. They deemed he was not defenseless. And you know, and I believe they deemed he wasn't defenseless because it was such a late slide and Bacon had come into the tackle. But again, the 15 yards will be tacked down, but he stays in the game. So the key was that they treated Diego Pavia as a runner. Because you saw, he yeah. was still trying to shake and bake and make some moves. Yeah. And, so if you're Bacon, what are you supposed to do well, as a defender? And, and, he hit him with a shoulder. And I actually like that. You know, give him the 15, but let him stay in the game. So New Mexico State back into the red zone there. Perfect one of one with a touchdown today. Pavia looking end zone. Incomplete. Was trying to find David on that fade. Jalen Burton there in good coverage. Yeah, and you see the long arms. Cordell David, we talked about it, 6'3". You got Justice Power, 6'4". So the perfect wide receivers. Pick your poison on the outside. Just that back shoulder fade. Let him go up. I mean, he made an unbelievable catch. He's just out of bounds. Good coverage there. So after the incompletion, second and 10 for New Mexico State. In the red zone. They go to the ground. Watkins maybe gets one. A good stop by J.B. Brown. You know, Coach Kill told us about Amani Watkins. He was at TCU last year. He transferred over to New Mexico State. He's a burner. He's a very good running back. We're glad to have him and healthy. And, you know, we talked to Coach Kill before the game. Uh, very intense. He was ready to go today for this one. He feels like he has everything he needs at New Mexico State to turn this program into a winner consistently. First third down of this drive. It'll be third and nine. Pavia looking left. He's pressured. Scampering, and he's going to pick up the first down. Trent Sims saved the touchdown, but Pavia showing you he can move with his well, wheels. Not only that, you know, we were talking about that penalty so much. How about the toughness of Diego Pavia to take that hit a few plays ago from Chris Bacon, get up like nothing happened then. Again, extending the plays could have probably been a face mask there. Pavia shakes it off and then knows he has to go forward at the two yard line to get the yard to gain and it's first and goal. Outstanding play by Diego Pavia and great toughness. I mean, look at his numbers, averaging almost 10 yards per rush. Big boy formation for the Aggies. They give it to Watkins, and he has stood up on first down. J.B. Brown showing the intensity from this Bowling Green defense. Yeah, and you said it old school, double tights, high formation. But excellent job up front by Bowling Green to shed blocks. Blaine Spires, number nine, was up in there. And you almost wonder for New Mexico State if you're going to put one of your bigger backs in, like Jones or Thomas, a 230 guy, 240 guy. And yep, right on cue, there's Star Thomas. Put a 230-pounder back there. 
So let's see if Thomas can punch it in for the Aggies here on second and goal. Pavia keeps it, throwing end zone. Touchdown! A two-yard touchdown completion, but we do have whistles. Eric Marsh, the tight end, completes it. But let's see what the call is. Holding. Defense number six. Ah! The penalty is defined. The result of the play is a touchdown. And it's a well-designed play. You got Marsh, 48, lined up at that fullback position. A little play action to star Thomas. And then you just slide Marsh out into the flat. Nice easy throw by Diego Pavia and a nice touchdown in the quick lane bowl for Eric Marsh. Ethan Albertson, his extra point is good. New Mexico State with a 14-0 lead here in the second quarter. And we talked about it. Bowling Green has been able to move the ball. He's got to finish drives. He's got to get points on the board. And this New Mexico State offense led by Diego Pavia is looking good. New Mexico State leads it 14-0. We'll be back. The college football playoff semifinals, Saturday, December 31st on ESPN. New Mexico State with a 14-0 lead. John Schriff and Rini Angolia, Tara Talmadge on the call for this one. Well, moments ago here in this second quarter, Matt McDonald was on the sideline with his father, Paul McDonald, former NFL quarterback. Tara, fill us in. Do you have an update on Matt McDonald? Well, I had a chance to speak with the lead trainer on staff at Bowling Green about Matt McDonald. And as of right now, they're telling me that he is still under evaluation and that they have not made a decision about if he will return to this game. However, a little bit earlier, I did see him throwing the ball a little bit, playing catch with some of the other quarterbacks as well. So I think we're just going to have to wait this one out and see if he has a chance to get back in. All right, Tara, thank you so much. McDonald got hit out of bounds around the seven-minute mark you. of that first quarter. And his dad, all he can do is watch at this point. And you, you, and you got to protect the young man. And he knows that. Dad knows that. Scott Leffler knows that. And, again, he would play if you, get, if you left it up to him. But that's what you have the medical professionals for. Got to make sure he's okay. Embry on the return. Nice job to take it across the 30-yard line. McDonald still on the sideline. His backup, Camden Orth, in the game. If you're Bowling Green offense, we do, you do have a running game. Yeah. Offensively, what is your attack with the backup? Yeah, well, get that running game going, which I think Scott Leffler has, has made a concerted effort to do that. But, hey, now it's Camden Orth's time to shine. The junior out of Gainesville, Florida, he can make throws. He's got a strong arm. He just needs to spread it around. They, they've moved the ball with Orth. They just got to finish some drives off with some points. They will start from their own 32-yard line. Best starting field position of the day. Johnson with the carry. Brings it to the 40, a gain of eight. And Joel Johnson, we asked Coach Leffler about him. He said he's a situational back. He specifically said, we'll see him in jet sweeps a lot. That's where we like to use him right there. You know, you get eight yards on first down. That does wonders for your offense. An interception on their first drive. They missed a field goal on their second drive and then punt their third drive. See what Orth can do here for Bowling Green. Back to the ground. This is Keith, and he does pick up the first down. And again, if you can get that running game going, as we talked about, then that kind of brings some play action into it a little bit. It'll force New Mexico State to kind of come up a little better in the box. You know, right now, what a lot of teams do to Bowling Green, they go soft box. They, they challenge them to run, drop eight, and say, you know, we're going to max defend in the back. But right now, Bowling Green, nice job running the ball early. Play clock's at three. Fake the handoff, got to get it away. Wide open. Keith out of the backfield. What a play by Bowling Green, and what a play by Orth. Recognized the backside pressure and got it off. Well, and he had two guys. He not only had Teron Keith, he had Andrew Bench, one of the tight ends there as well. I mean, Chris Ojo, number three for New Mexico State, looks like he shot out of a cannon on the right side. And as you said, 
composure by Cam the North to say, let me get it up there. I got a, a, a back wide open. Just get some loft under it. I'm going to get a big play here. Excellent job by Cam the North. Empty backfield for Ord. Rolls out to his right. Throws on the run, incomplete. Off the hands of Harold Fan and Cyrus Dumas in coverage. Yeah, just a little bit behind him, but you know, I like the fact that Orth gets out of the pocket. He can't complete it. Live for another down, second and ten. Don't make a mistake there. If you're Scott Leffler, how much of the game plan gets adjusted I, you with know, your backup? I, I, other than experience and reps, you know, talent-wise in terms of arm strength and running ability, I, I think Orth is, is similar to McDonald. Like, they don't do a lot of things real different, except for Please the experience, of course. 335. 535. And the game reps, which go a long way, obviously. That experience of Matt McDonald, you just can't Thank replace. You. But it's a chance... Uh, you know, for Camden Orth to shine. And I asked Scott Leffler about his offense. He calls it a mutt offense, in quotes. It's a, it's just kind of a mix of everything he's learned from all the coaches he's been under. Good run by Orth, keeps it himself using that size, 6-3. And the read was the best thing there, right, on that zone read. Puts it in the belly, reads the defensive end coming down, pulls it out, and nice pickup on second and 10 again. Get it to a manageable third down here. And a timeout, New Mexico State. Falcons offense, they are moving the ball. The Aggies want to talk things over. The All-State Sugar Bowl coming up at noon Eastern on New Year's Eve on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the app. Bryce Young, Will Anderson Jr. and number five Alabama take on Deuce Vaughn and number nine Kansas State. It's the first ever meeting between these schools. Alabama, Kansas State, it'll be a good one. And they talk about opt-outs, but yeah, the two best players in Bama playing in this game. Gotta love that. For Bowling Green, this is their deepest penetration today at the 23-yard line on third and four. Handoff is to Patterson, trying to get to the marker, and just brought down Cyrus Dumas. And that's where, you know, they run counter there, that's fine, but as a back, Patterson, when you counter back, square the shoulders and go. It's third and short. You cannot go towards the sideline. Right here is fine. Square the shoulders and go. You got to take on that defender. You got to break a tackle, and you got to go get that first down. You can't go sideways lateral if you're, if you're Jason Patterson there. You just can't do it. So Mason Lawler will come on to attempt a 41-yard field goal. Missed his first attempt today. Plenty of leg, but he pushes it right. No good. So Lawler, 0 for 2 today. And Bowling Green still not on the board. College Football Studio is coming up at the half. We'll get Trevor's thoughts on the opening half. Plus, Conventional wisdom is it's been impossible to move it on Georgia and Michigan all year. How Ohio State and TCU plan to buck that trend. All that and more coming up at the half. John. Super Trevor, thank you guys. Welcome back here, second quarter. Star Thomas he is a big back, and you see him finishing the end of the run. That's what my partner did at UMass. Listen, you, Greeny, I know that's what you love to do, man. Yeah, and, and you got to finish runs off, especially when you're blessed with a 230-pound frame like Star Thomas. But, you know, really the difference in this game thus far, 159 total yards for Bowling Green, no points to show for it. Before that run, New Mexico State 157, but 14 points. Got to finish drives. 
Bowling Green has missed from 49 and 41 yard field goal attempts. Mason Lawler. It's a 14 0 lead for New Mexico State. A keeper, Pavia, chopped down right at the 39 yard line. Your line, a gain of three. All right, so I talked about my partner, Rini Angolia. Uh -oh. We had to go way oh, no. back into the archives. I hate when this comes up. Look at the size of those uh, pads. I was a freshman back then. That, that, I was a freshman. We couldn't get anything before. That's okay, though. W where's the neck roll? Good old days right there. I, I, know the, you, I know you had a neck roll. I got the ball in the wrong hand right there. Should be in the left hand. That was a bad habit I got from Emmett Smith. It's all right, though. That's when they used the fullback. Yes, we did. And, and we had two hour and 20 minute games too because we ran it a lot it was a, a announcers you know love that so your guys back in the game star thomas at running back second and seven for the aggies pavia throwing complete it was dropped by justice powers yeah pavia put it right on powers just thinking about getting hit before he secured the ball and now this is the money down right Defensively here for Bowling Green. You got him third and six, third and seven. You got to get off the field here with 248 left in the second quarter. See if you can get some positive momentum going in at halftime. Pavi has been good on third down so far. Three of four on third downs today. Yeah, to me, he's been the difference in this game. He's been the best player uh, out in the field today. The Bowling Green crowd trying to get into it here at Ford Field. And a... Timeout, New Mexico State. New Mexico State. They're second of the half. 30 second timeout. Now we're talking Diego Pavia. Take a look at what he's done so far today in this first half. And, and you know, the thing is, he's dual threat. And so that drives defensive crazy. He throws nice balls. Look at the vertical route down to Justin, Justice Powers early on. And then the RPO. RPO game is built for a quarterback like Diego Pavia. You just have to make good decisions he did there as he threw it to Star Thomas for the touchdown. And then the toughness, and this was after he took a big hit, uh, a late hit on Chris Bacon. And then, you know, a little play action, fake it to the tailback, slide that fullback slash tight end into the flat, and just nice little dumb pass. Pretty good numbers right there for Diego Pavia. Well, that's why this team started 0-4. And then all of a sudden, Diego Pavia figured it out. And he has got the Aggies rolling. Third and seven. Here comes the pressure from the back side. Carl Brooks trying to chase him down. Pavia. Yes, they completed it. Cordell David right on the sideline with the catch, a gain of 17. And Pavia looked like he was going to run the ball, but pulled up right at the line of scrimmage and delivers the ball. Head up all the way. Nah, that's a good pass, good catch. Nice job by Cordell David. Would have been good on Sunday, had two feet in there. So a little confusion, late substitutions. First and 10 for the Aggies in Bowling Green territory. Pavia finds Thomas out of the backfield, makes the first guy miss. It takes two guys to bring him down, picked up a tough three yards. I mean, you see those thighs, they're like tree trunks. You better, you better bring it and you better wrap up on Star Thomas. He bounced off that first defender, picks up three or four yards on first down. And if you're in New Mexico State, you can see them taking their time, clock click is ticking under two minutes now to play in this first half. Even though it's 14 to nothing, that's not really indicative of how the game has felt in this first half. Bowling Green has moved the ball, just no points yet. Second and seven. Pavia, he's going to take a shot. Receiver, he was held. No penalty flag. That was just his powers. You could see the jersey yeah. getting tugged. Well, I was thinking if this, if this was the NFL, you would have saw about three flags go in there. Eh, it lets you get away with it a little bit more in college football. But I'm with you, partner. I thought there was a little tug of the shoulder right before the separation. It just overthrown to Justice Powers. But a couple good wide receivers on the outside that can run Jalen Burton with the coverage there. So, And here's the thing. They don't call it. That's good. It's good, good coverage. Good yeah.
Bowling Green showing pressure on third and seven. Here come the Falcons on the blitz. Pavia gets rid of it, complete. First down to Tomas Whitford. Pavia took a shot, but stood in there to deliver yeah. the strike. The toughness, he knows he's gonna get hit as Bowling Green sends a blitz. He stands in the pocket, gets the hit, and delivers it to Whitford, his big tight end. Picks up the first down. No, actually a little short, I'm sorry. He did not get it. We're gonna see, he's gonna take the hit off his right side. He knows it's coming, he can feel it. And delivers it to Whitford. There's a good tackle by Chris Bacon to keep Whitford from getting that first down as the clock continues to run here. So marked just short yep. of the first down. It'll bring up fourth and inches. And now New Mexico State will use their timeout. final timeout of the New first Mexico half. State. Yeah, Jerry There's Kill lets it run, timeout. calls a timeout, he'll decide half. what he wants One to do here. Timeout. We'll be back in 10 seconds after this message from Ally. How you support your team is how your money deserves to be supported. That's why we're all better off with an ally. Back to you. So on fourth and one, if you're Jerry Kill, what are you doing here? Well, Ethan Albertson, one of your kickers, got a pretty strong foot. He's got the ability to hit a 50-yarder, you know, but from here, you're talking about 52. So I think they're going to go for it here. That's why I think he let that clock run down to one second. Um, so I think he's going to go for it. Try to at least you know, get it closer for a more manageable field goal instead of try a really long one here. But we'll see if I'm right. You know, Jerry Kill has been all over the college football world. He's done such a great job at so many schools. He, in talking to him this week, it feels like he's reinvigorated. Yeah. With, with everything that they're supplying him, new facilities, a new right. conference, yeah. going to Conference USA. He was at Northern Illinois, at Minnesota, all places that he's turned around and done an excellent job. And he's doing it here in the first year at New Mexico State. On fourth downs this season, New Mexico State, 11 of 14. The fullback, Eric Marsh, and the running back, Star Thomas, will line up behind Pavia. This was the formation they ran at the goal line for that two-yard touchdown pass to Eric Marsh. On fourth and one, and it looks like Bowling timeout. Green's going to use a timeout. Yeah, I think Scott Leffler wanted to see what they lined up in. Timeout. Defense coordinator Eric Lewis. So, yep, came out in that same formation. A power formation, a little old school there. So now this is the chess match, right, of football. So we'll see if New Mexico State and offensive coordinator Tim Beck, who, oh, by the way, has been friends with Jerry Kill for 30 years. They've coached together a ton. He's at New Mexico State with Coach Kill. We'll see if they come out in the same play or maybe a different formation. So New Mexico State out of timeouts. Bowling Green used their first. They have two remaining here in this half. And New Mexico State will switch it up. They go to three wide receivers on fourth and one. Plenty of time on the play clock. Pavia, we had a flinch before the snap here. It's a penalty flag. Looked like it was false start on the Aggies. Well, and I think the false start actually helped them because Bowling Green had that read perfectly. They knew exactly what they were going to do. They were going to quarterback sneak it with Pavia. They were not going to get it. But the false start. Prior to the ball being snapped, false start. Offense number 85. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. That's the tight end, Whitford. Now you get backed up five yards. What's the play? Well, I think they'll go for it again, but now it's going to be a passing play, right? And something where you can maybe roll Pavi out, give him a run pass option. You see the left side of the screen, you're going to see the flinch right there. But you see Bowling Green, I mean, is in there. They had him stopped. So that the flinch actually helped New Mexico stay. Yeah, backs them up five, but they get another shot at it here. 35 seconds to play in this first half. On fourth and six, Pavia rolling out, avoids the rush. Throws it up and it's picked off. Chris Bacon with the interception for the Falcons. 
will be tripped up. And the Bowling Green defense comes up huge. I like the decision by Pavi, though. He knew it was fourth down. Just throw it up. How many times do you see quarterbacks run out of bounds and take a sack? sack? Throw it up. It's going back to Bowling Green either way. But Carl Brooks, the big man, shows you he can run. But excellent job by Chris Bacon to make that interception. Get it back to the 32-yard line here with 22 seconds left. You got to be careful, though, if you're Bowling Green because usually more bad happens to you, you know, than good with only 22 seconds left. We'll probably call something, you know, high percentage here. See if you can squirt something out towards midfield. This was Pavia coming off on the end of that play, a little gimpy as he goes to the sideline. Here's Orth. Connects over the middle. And getting down for the first down is Osborne. He actually marked him just short, yeah, so the clock will continue to run. He thought he had a first down, and now that forces Bowling Green to use their second timeout. Yeah, he was a yard short, and so what Scott Leffler's mad about, the line judge on his sideline was standing where it would be a first down, so he assumed the clock was going to start, but the near side, the headline judge had him a yard short. Please reset the game clock to 12 seconds. So they're going to put four seconds back on, but yeah, Scott Leffler not, not happy. It's the right spot, by the way. Yeah, that so look says a lot. If you're Leffler, are you mad at the officials or you're mad at Osborne for getting well, down before yeah, the marker? I mean, Osborne's just trying to make the play. Um, I, I think he's kind of upset at the official, but the far side official, it's real hard for him to see. The headline judge had the right spot. It's just one of those things. He gets four seconds back, but... All right, let's take a look at that last play with the clock. Tell me what you see, Greeny. So we're going to watch a little inside route. Good job by Orth. Put it on him. Yeah, knees down. I mean, he just he tried to die for the first down marker. Just came up a little short. 12 seconds to play here in this first half. Bowling Green, one timeout remaining. Orth downfield incomplete was looking for Hilaire. Eight seconds. Yeah, and good bracketed coverage there. Patrick Day, the boundary safety was on top of that one. You had the corner underneath. Terrific job in the back end there by New Mexico State. You know, we asked Coach Kill, he said, I, I asked these kids for everything they could possibly give me this season. He goes, they, they, there's not even 1% more they can give me. That's how happy he is, especially starting 0-4, to be able to get to a bowl game and finish the way they have. And good first half here for them as well. Third and one. Orth flushed out. He will pick up the first down and will get out of bounds. One second on the clock. So Camden Orth picks up eight yards. Enough to, for a final oh, second we're, heave. We're about to see the arm strength of Camden North here. Little Hail Mary as uh, New Mexico State's got three defenders back at the goal line. Great camera work there. Get a good look at it. So you got three defenders in the end zone for New Mexico State. Ball at their own 49-yard line. Orth steps up, heaves it toward the end zone. And it's just batted down incomplete. Dylan early, the free safety, reading that perfectly. And you never see free safeties knock it down like that, which you should. That's the proper football play. Usually they want that interception for their stats, but good job, Dylan early. Our score at the half, New Mexico State, 14-0 over Bowling Green. Bowling Green had chances. They missed two field goals, one from 49, another from 41. Yeah, yardage, move the ball, just no points. Let's send it down to Tara with New Mexico State head coach Jerry Kill. Coach, Bowling Green still has yet to get on the board. How impressed have you been with your defense so far? Well, you know, they're playing hard, and, and uh, you know, that's half the battle. And we're tackling pretty well, and we haven't given up the big play. And, and the biggest thing is not give up the big play, except for the one uh, trick play. Uh, we've, we've pretty much uh, taken care of that. Well, you've got one more half to win this bowl game. How do you do it? Not turn, the, not turn the damn ball over. You know, take care of the football and keep playing good defense. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you.
All right, Tara, good stuff. Jerry Kill, that is an old-school football coach. It has been great to talk with him this week. Our score at the half, New Mexico State up 14 to nothing. Let's send it to the studio. Jeff, it's one. What's catching you here? Uh, Wisconsin, Oklahoma State, both starting quarterbacks have transferred out. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. Welcome back to the Quick Lane Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. We're here at the half. New Mexico State with a 14-0 lead over Bowling Green here at Ford Field here in Detroit, Michigan. What's up, everybody? Welcome back inside the booth. Alongside my partner, Rini Angolia, I'm John Schiff and Tara Talmadge would join us momentarily. All right, so the first half, the story of that first half was really the quarterbacks. Pavia for New Mexico State, he was fantastic. Matt McDonald, unfortunately, he got injured, knocked out of that game in the first quarter of the seven-minute mark. Yeah, I agree. And Kevin Orth, who, who's come in in relief for Matt McDonald for Bowling Green, has played well. But, I mean, you lose your starting quarterback, all that experience, all the reps going to it, it's hard to overcome. They've moved the ball. They just have not been able to put points on the board. All right, let's take a look at your FIS first-half stats. And what stands out for you, Rini? Well, I mean, you look at, again, Bowling Green, 174 total yards, 10 first downs, 31 to 31 plays, just no points to show for it. But you look at New Mexico State, pretty balanced pass. You know, get that run up a little bit. But the story, and you mentioned it, John, Diego Pavia has been the difference in this game. To me, he's been the best player on the field for both teams. The backup, Camden Orth, he has played very well. He has moved the ball, unfortunately, for Bowling Green. They've missed two field goals from 49 and 41 yards out. Mexico State, this is their first first half shutout against an FBS opponent. And they're doing it on the national stage, the only football college football game in town today. So Mexico State will receive the opening kickoff here to start this third quarter. All right, let's check in with Tara, who spoke with Scott Leffler. I did, and Coach Leffler told me that Matt McDonald is officially out for the rest of the game. No official word on exactly what the injury is, but he will not be returning to this bowl game. Uh, when I asked him about exactly what that changes for your offense, Coach Leffler told me that it changes everything. Obviously, the rhythm was completely thrown off when Matt McDonald went down, and also now they just have to adjust, come up with a brand new game plan, and hope it works out. All right, Tara, that is a huge loss for Bowling Green. Matt McDonald out for the rest of this game. Camden Orth has played very yeah. well in that first half. Let's see what adjustments will be made. Bowling Green will start on defense. Diego Pavia and New Mexico State with a 14-0 lead to start this third quarter. Pavia keeps it, sidearm slings it, and completes it to his freshman, Jonathan Brady. And the coaches raved about Jonathan Brady, the young wide receiver out of Bishop Gorman, Las Vegas. He said he is going to be a good one. Nice route there to start. Second half here, come back, make that catch from your quarterback. Nice eight-yard pickup, start the second half. I mean, you think about what Coach Kill has done in his first year of this program, starting 0-4, they are now 6-6. Six and six. He brings just credibility to this Aggies program. To the ground, lowering the shoulder, Jamani Jones banging forward for a first down. I mean, and Coach Kill told us, listen, he had a three-year plan. In three years, he said, to become the team he wants to be. And again, even he said, a little surprise how my team you know, rebounded after that 0-4 start to get to that six win mark and get to a bowl game. And uh, they definitely have played way better the second half of the season. And that's a testament to Coach Kill and his coaches. Three wide receivers on first down. End around. This is Brady with tons of room in front of him. He's got Pavia as the lead blocker. What a play by New Mexico State. We've talked up the freshman Jonathan Brady out of Las Vegas. 
He picks up 37 yards. Well, and I tell you what, in the future, Jerry Kill and Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, are going to tell their quarterback, Diego Pavia, we love you being out in front. Do not put your right shoulder into this block. You cannot get hurt here. I love the toughness. You just got to be careful. Kind of, you know, shield them, you know. Throw a pick like in basketball. Don't drop that right shoulder in there. But he's a tough one. And then, of course, Brady. Get it to your fast and skilled players in space. Let them make plays. Explosive play here in this third quarter. And handoff is to Jones. Let's take another look at that lead block by quarterback Diego Pavia. At least try to throw your left shoulder if you're going to do it. You just, you know, you got to be careful. I mean, you're hitting a big defensive player there and DJ Taylor. 240 pound linebacker. I love his toughness. We talked about it in the first half, Diego Pavia. He's taken big hits. He's popped right up. He's run the ball. He's distributed it well to his wide receiver. He's a good young quarterback. All right, now if you're on offense and you see your quarterback throw a block like that, does that fire you oh, up? Oh, absolutely, yeah. He's, he showed up to play. There's no doubt. He's a tough kid, and you love that. Marsh, the fullback in there, lead blocker for Jones. Pavia keeps it, and he's going to tuck it and run. Pavia, there is no sliding in his game. I was thinking the same thing, yeah. You, you better come up and tackle him because he's not going. Now, he, he'll he learn that as he gets more reps, more experience, because at the end of the day, we, I mean, we're seeing it on the other sideline, right? The most important thing is to stay in the game as a starting quarterback. You got to play. I mean, he's tough as nails, no doubt about it. But you also got to be smart up here. You got to be sensible, smart upstairs, know when to get down, know when to not take those hits. Pavia on the ground today, five rushes. 39 yards. After a pick of a bait, brings up third and two. Pavia keeps it, avoids the rush somehow, running for his life, will just throw it away. Yeah, excellent penetration by the Bowling Green defense there to blow that play up. Pavia smart enough to know once he got out of the pocket, just throw the ball to the line of scrimmage. Don't take that sack. You can see penetration right away. Excellent job there by J.B. Brown, the Will linebacker, number 12. Very athletic. Maybe their best linebacker. Very powerful. Gets in there. Doesn't make the tackle, but he makes the play. So Ethan Albertson will come on for a 35-yard field goal attempt. He has six of nine on field goals so far this year. And Albertson, that one is pure. Strong opening drive to start this third quarter for New Mexico State. They add to their lead up 17 to nothing over Bowling Green. Look at his jersey. It's ripped. He's a tough guy, and he's your quarterback. Diego Pavia, lead blocker out in front. That was the big play on the drive for the Aggies. Bowl season continues with four more games tomorrow on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the app. At noon Eastern, Georgia Southern takes on Buffalo in the battle in the Camellia Bowl. Then Memphis meets Utah State in the Serve Pro First Responder Bowl, followed by Coastal Carolina and East Carolina in the Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl. Capping off this full day of action, got Wisconsin and Oklahoma State in the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. I mean, this is just the best time yeah, of year. Absolutely. Nothing but college football. Sit at home with your loved ones. Thanks for joining us here on this day after Christmas here in Detroit. John Schriffen, Rini Angolia, Tara Talmadge on the call. Bowling Green on the return. That's Teron Keith. He's got room. One guy to beat. He's by him. Keith to the end zone. Touchdown. A 75-yard kick return. And Bowling Green is on the board here in the third quarter. You know, partner, you just asked me when we were at break, who needs to step up for Bowling Green? Well, Teron Keith just did. Coaches raved about him, that he's just a football player. Said he's not a burner. He, he does a lot of things really well. And uh, oh, by the way, you want to short kick it. He's not going to fair catch it. He makes the catch. Great blocking by that kick return team as Teron Keith gets it up there and then gets it to the outside. And oh, by the way, he says, I think my speed is good enough to take it to the house. Big time play 
from Teron Keith and special teams of Bowling Green. Mason Lawler will come on to attempt the extra point for the Falcons. And just like that, Bowling Green responds. A huge touchdown by Teron Keith. Keith putting on the burners, puts his team on the back. Bowling Green is on the board. Wednesday, we've got three more bowl games on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the app at 2 Eastern. UCS squares off against Duke in the Military Bowl, presented by Periton. And then at 5.30 Eastern, Kansas faces Arkansas in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. At 9 Eastern, Texas Tech will take on Ole Miss in the Tax Act Texas Bowl. Bowling Green with a huge kickoff return for a touchdown by Teron Keith. 75 yards to the house. We talked about what they needed to do at yeah. half, and he is the spark the Falcons need. Well, needed. you need that spark. Well, you know, Teron Keith this season, three game-winning touchdowns. I mean, he's just, again, a football player. He just makes plays. And you, you, you love a player like that on your team. Catches the ball great out of the backfield, runs the ball, special teams, and right there, 75-yard kickoff return. And you see some smiles on the face now of these Bowling Green players. We'll see. That should be the spark to kind of wake them up here. So Lawler will boot things away. Fielded at the five. Brady trying to get something on the return. Won't make it back to the 20. Let's take a look at the season recap for Bowling Green. Finished the season at six and six to make this bowl appearance, but it was a shaky start. They played some really tough teams to start the season. Lost three of their first four games to start this season. But then they went on a little run. They had a some tight games in the middle of it. They won their next four games, four or five by three points or less. And then this was the big one on their schedule. If you beat Toledo, you have a successful season at Bowling Green. And that was the MAC champion as well that they beat in Toledo. All right, let's send it down to Tara for more on Teron Keith. What a moment that was for Teron Keith. This has definitely been an emotional season for him. His brother passed away before the Toledo game. He had a last second touchdown in that one to help Bowling Green win that. And now he's stepping up again today. He was telling me that he is playing this season for his brother alongside his other brothers. Teron Keith, you can tell he is just an outstanding young man playing for a great coach and Scott Leffler. And Scott Leffler, when he took over this program, he said he wanted guys to really rebuild this program. Quality guys, yeah. quality young men. And he said he formed this roster with 75% of the roster in a four-hour radius yeah. of local guys. Teron Keith, though, from Central Florida, DeLand, played at Mainland High School. He's a good one to get out of Florida for this program. Oh, they almost had a big play. It was Cordell David. Got past the defender, but couldn't haul it in. And if Cordell David catches that ball, see you later. I mean, he's gone. He's going to score a touchdown here. Just kind of awkwardly, you know, hit his hands weird. He didn't know if he wanted to high point it, try to basket, catch it, and it goes incomplete. A ton of contact with the well, ball in the air. And Deshaun Jones, I mean, if they're going to let you play the corner, if they're going to let you be physical, I mean, that, and Deshaun Jones is 5'11". You got Cordell David 6'3", 6'4". So... Those smaller DBs love to get in there and be physical at the line of scrimmage. Ford Field getting loud with Falcons fans. And on third and five, timeout. New Mexico State will call a timeout. New Mexico State, their first of the half. And you can feel the buzz, right? You can feel the difference. Listen, great crowd today for as cold as the temperatures have been timeout. here in Michigan and all over the country. Bowling Green fans showed out to this game. And so now after that touchdown uh, kick return by Keith, you just see the, you know, the momentum now. A little bit of a shift, so a big play here, third and five for the defense to try to get the ball back to their offense. There is definitely a sea of orange, but yeah. let's not forget, New Mexico State fans, they made a far trip. They have definitely showed up here. Just their second bowl appearance in 61 seasons. The Aggies 
excited about this team going forward. I mean, we talked about it in the open, all these people, oh, there's too many bowls, they're not important. It is important to these kids, these players, they've worked their tails off their entire career to get here and, and play in a bowl game. On third and five. Pavia hands it off, trying to get to the edge. And Watkins does get there for the first down. And the patience of Amante Watkins there, I love it. They go speed sweep with him, right? And he's just kind of floating on the outside. Again, he's a 10 400 meter guy, blazing speed. See how he set it up a little dip de doo inside and then just turned the corner. Knew he had enough speed. Once he turned that corner, he was going to pick up the first down. As a former running back, what does it take to have that patience to wait for the play to unfold? Yeah, I mean, really, it's one of those things you just you just have it, right? You just know not to rush it. He could have turned it up there and rushed it and said he set it up nicely and knew he had the speed to turn the corner. This is Thomas, makes a cut, gets up the middle. And New Mexico State trying to get the momentum back, a gain of eight for Star Thomas. And so that makes your offense dangerous, right? You have a quarterback like Diego Pavia that can kind of do it all. You got your big downhill runners and Star Thomas, Jamani Jones, and then you have the speed of Watkins, right, that we saw in that speed sweep. They fake the run. Pavia throws. Nice catch on the sideline made by Chris Bellamy. Showing off those strong hands, gain of eight. And the nice thing I like about Bellamy right there. We do have a penalty flag. On field, offense, number 51. Five yard penalty, second down. Well, and the catch is for not. But you like how Bellamy came back. A.J. Vipulu, the left guard, called for the penalty. And one of the young offensive linemen, again, they're, they're pretty young up front. They're going to gain valuable experience or have gained valuable experience this year. And this program is, is really in good shape transitioning to Conference USA next year. The penalty backs him up second and seven. Thomas, the man in motion. Pavia, quarterback keeper. Whoa, what a collision at the line of scrimmage. A loss of one for Pavia. That defensive front for Bowling Green was ready. Yeah, it closed in a hurry. Ali Saad, 99 is there. Dear Kelly also in there. And you can see the defense now of Bowling Green playing, playing a little bit more of a pep in their step as well. First tackle for loss for the Falcons since the first quarter. Man, Ford Field has new life right now. Third and eight. Here comes the blitz. Pavia gets rid of it over the middle, and he completes it. That's Jonathan Brady, good for a first down, gets 11. And that's just a backbreaker for a defense. You got him third and long. You got the slant from Brady, he was the middle receiver, so you got to clear inside, then you slant underneath him, and then the key to that play, though, is Diego Pavia putting it to him on time when he slants inside, makes the catch, turns it up, and he has got the first down. You know, it's one thing when the coaches tell us before the game that we're going to have a special freshman, he's going to be good. We're like, okay, we'll wait and see. No, Brady, he is a legit star freshman. First and ten, they go to David. David is dragged out of bounds from behind by Trent Sims. And again, you know, just taking what the defense gives you right there. Good quick pass. Out to David. Turn it up, and it doesn't look like much on first down. You look, oh, seven, six, seven yards on first down. Under seven minutes to play here in this third quarter. On second and three. They go back to the ground, spinning. Star Thomas trying to push. He only picked up one. It'll bring up third and short. A good push there by the defensive line of Bowling Green. Again, got New Mexico State to third down, third and short this time. And I got to believe for New Mexico State and offensive coordinator Tim Beck, and Jerry Kill might tell him, hey, 
We're going to be aggressive. We have two downs here to pick this thing up. If we don't get it here, we'll see what the play call is here on third and two. On this drive, New Mexico State is a perfect two for two on third downs. As Jerry Kill looks on from the sideline, David in motion across the formation. Fake the handoff. Pavia, he's got a man deep. Incomplete. Justice Powers went up high but couldn't bring it down. And he had a step on Deshaun Jones, the corner, but he turned and ran. A lot of air into the ball. That's when fast DBs can make up some space. And Deshaun Jones did it right there. And Powers is still down the wide receiver after the play. Yeah, it looked like he just came down awkwardly, right? On that leg as he goes up and tries to high point it. And this one, I think, you know, if you're Diego Pavi and you have it back, a little less air, good effort. You just see, yeah, you see just kind of the splits there and comes down, so hopefully Powers is okay. You can see Deshaun Jones four, looking to make up that time, then go up to break up that catch. And again, if you're Diego Pavia, that's one a little less on, on the air there. So as the medical team attends to Justice Powers, we will step aside and be back to Detroit after this. Left, Jerry Kill on the right. Both coaches doing a fantastic job turning around programs that have not been to a bowl game in a while. Justice Powers on that last play, he was helped off the field. We saw him land awkwardly, yeah. and he immediately grabbed at that right knee. Yeah, just, he just said, came down, you saw those legs split, and so hopefully Justice Powers okay. And they will punt. I thought they might go for it, but you know, the fact that you know, Bowling Green offensively has no points to show for, their seven coming off a kickoff return. I like this call by Jerry Kill. He's trying to play the field position game. So Eberle will punt this one away. It will take a Aggies roll inside the 10. They're going to let this thing roll. And it's going to be down at the five yard line. So George Eberle, a 41 yard punt, flips the field. They were in no man's well, land deciding would they go for it or not. And you saw the smile on his face. I think he said, yeah, just like, uh, just like the doctor ordered, just like I drew it up. Going to kick it short and get a nice roll down to the five. You see Jerry Kill, yeah, man. He intense. is so fired up to be back as a head coach again. Had to step away from the game due to health issues when he was the head coach at Minnesota. But he says he is good to go. He is so happy to be at New Mexico State in Las Cruces. Throwing on the run complete. Tight end chopped out of bounds. Christian Sims. Good catch by the big tight end. Well, we talked about Jerry Kill in his first year here as the Aggies head coach. I mean, he is one of the most respected coaches in all of college football. Oh, no doubt about it. And as you talked about, he's been so many places, had the health issues, stepped away. He was an administrator right there, athletic director, was at TCU last year, and just but it but just so well respected, a great coach. And again, they call him Mr. Fix It. He loves, he loves the challenge of going to programs that are down and turning him around. Keith cannot get away. That's Trevor Brohard, a loss of seven in the backfield. You know, when we were talking to defensive coordinator Nate Dryling, uh, he said Trevor Brohard, he's the heart and soul of our defense. And oh, by the way, Nate Dryling, 32-year-old defensive coordinator, young guy, love talking to him this week. And But you see Brohard there, number 80, kind of that unconventional number for a middle linebacker as he shoots through there. And makes the tackle. He said, you're not going to miss him. He's got the heavy metal hair hanging out and just got the Alice Cooper eye black there. Broward the came up with that huge interception in the first quarter that led to the first touchdown for New Mexico State. Third and 11, play clock winding down. Falcons, Orth out of his own end zone, off the hands of his receiver, incomplete. Good coverage by Cyrus Dumas. Yeah, and he tried to get it to Hilaire there. And there's a guy that's made a ton of big plays for Bowling Green this year and just been really quiet in this game tonight. A little high, just couldn't come down with it, but exactly what you want to do defensively. You got to pin back, keep him down there, the big TFL by Brohard. And now you're going to get really good field position here for your offense. That is the first three and out by either team so far today. Tell him, tell him, tell him. 
Samari Sir gets that punt away. A booming punt will back up Dixon, and he is met immediately. No return for New Mexico State. But Sean Wimberly, nice job with the tackle on special teams. Well, and a great punt, but as good as the punt was, you're still going to get good field position, but pitcher perfect, form tackle, exactly what you want to do. Timed it up perfectly, saw what he hit. You know, how many times there we see someone, we see someone dip the head and, you know, get called for a targeting. Good tackle there for special teams. Exactly what you want to do by Wimberly. On first down so far today, New Mexico State is averaging over five yards. Let's see what they do here on their drive starting in their own territory. First and ten. Handoff is to Watkins, has a crease on the outside. And they will add to that average on first downs. What's been the key for New Mexico State dialing up something efficient on first downs? Yeah, first I, I think you're getting good push. We haven't given that offensive line enough credit. But I just think they're so dangerous with Pavia that he can pull it and keep it. They got some good wide receivers on the outside that it's just kind of keeping that Bowling Green defense kind of a little off balance, off kilter on first down. And as you said it, you get seven, eight yards on first down. That's, that's great stuff for your offense. It opens up the playbook. Bowling Green show pressure. They back off now on second and two. There's a hole for Watkins right up the middle. Amante Watkins, a 45-yard touchdown run to the house. You just kind of felt it, right? In the last couple times, Amante Watkins has touched the ball that he was close to taking one of the house. We've talked about it. I've said it a couple of times. He's a 10, 400 meter guy. You get him in space in open field, you're not catching him. Again, he was at TCU last year, transferred over to New Mexico State when Coach Kill came over, took this program over. And what an addition penalty, for the Aggies. Penalty fag as Albertson bangs the extra point through. Offside. Defense number 10, the penalties decline, the result of the play is the try is good. And Jerry Kill told us, Amante Watkins has been banged up for yes. most of the season. He said this is the healthiest he has been all year long, and he showed you the speed. Yeah, those few weeks off from the last game before this bowl game, been really good to Amante Watkins. And again, how about the blocking up front? Again, good push. You give a guy like Amante Watkins a little space, give him 12 inches, he'll take it to the house. If I'm in Conference USA next season, I don't want to play New Mexico State because this team is on the rise. Yeah. Liberty going into that conference as well. A, a team that they beat second to last game of the season to become bowl eligible. So uh, some new members in Conference USA next year, and it's going to be a good transition for New Mexico State. You know, the team's coming back in Conference USA next season right now. They're 2-1 and one in bowl season. Western Kentucky's got a win. Middle Tennessee had a very big win the other night. Rick Stockstill, one of the best yeah. head coaches in the country. Absolutely. He is a great guy to talk to. Albertson getting ready to kick this one away for New Mexico State. A 24-7 lead here in this third quarter. A low-line drive will go out of bounds. Yeah, and that's a product of the Tron Keith Kick out of bounds. return. Kicking team number 84. By rule, the ball will be placed to the 35-yard line. First down and 10. It is time now for our Chipotle clutch delivery. Good blocking up front. You just, you see Amante Watkins hit it. No hesitation. Straight downhill. Great ball security. High and tight. Just, he looks like a sprinter right there on his way to a gold medal. So how do the Falcons answer here? Camden Orth on the run, showing that strong arm, just overthrows his receiver. In this third quarter, New Mexico State, 150 yards, Bowling Green, Negative one. Yeah, yeah, and so now, if you're Bowling Green, shouldn't be any pressure on you. Like, forget it. You're, you're down in this game uh, late in the third quarter. 
Just open it up and see what you can do. Try to make some plays, have some fun here. If you're, if you're just joining us, Bowling Green lost their starting quarterback back in the first quarter with seven minutes to play, running out of bounds. Matt McDonald got hit out of bounds, late hit. He has not come back. He is out for the rest of this game. His backup, Camden Orth, delivers a strike there to Hilaire. A gain of 14, and you can see Orth, he is an athletic quarterback. Yeah, he can throw the ball. I just think it's a lack of reps and experience, right? And if you're a Bowling Green fan, you're upset because the play that Matt McDonald got knocked out of the game, it was a late hit by Dylan Early. Clear late hit. So they're, you know, their fans are obviously not happy about that, and rightfully so. Under three minutes to play here in this third quarter. Orth with the play fake. Pressure in his face will deliver to his running back out of the backfield. That's Keith. And Keith will pick up a first down. And I love the sense of urgency they're playing with here at Bowling Green. And you can see they're picking the tempo up. So I think Scott Leffler's going to get it going a little bit. And sometimes that puts a young quarterback into a better rhythm. Doesn't let him think as much. Just play. See the numbers for the backup Orth. Andrew Bench hurdles a defender, but it looks like this one might be coming back. Holding. Offense. Number 64. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's the right guard, Bronson Warner. Yeah, and see, that hurts, right? So you get a you get a good play. Right in the middle, right there, 64, a little bit of a tackle. It's the right call, an easy call for the umpire. And that hurts, right, because you get a nice play to, to bench your tight end. Instead of a first down, now you're backed up and first and 20. Now Sterling Webb, the big defensive tackle, had something to say about that. I mean, he, he caused that holding. On first and 20, Orth. Not on the same page with his wide receiver. He was looking for Austin Osborne, and Osborne ran a good route, was open, just not misconnection. Well, that's the issue, right? When you have a backup quarterback, you just don't have those reps with your wide receivers. The timing's usually a little bit off, as it looked to be right there. Adjust and adapt, you know, that's what Scott Leffler said you got to do. When you call plays to your quarterback and Orth trying to set up a screen pass. This is to Sims. Sims still on his feet and he rumbles for a first down. That's how you get your young quarterback into it. Yeah, good middle screen to the tight end, Christian Sims. I mean, that's a 6'4, 240 pounder there. Tight end running like a wide receiver. Good high percentage call. Second and 20. A little fake and a little inside. Good catch by Sims and good wheels by the tight end to pick up that first down. This tight end group for Bowling Excellent. Green is really yes. good. I mean, in Fannin, we talked about Fannin, the young tight end. He leads the team in rushing touchdowns with four. Unfortunately, his knee is yes. banged up. That's kind of limited him, but a great tight end group here for the Falcons. First and ten. Pump fake. Looking. Dropped at the three. Hilaire had it, and the contact knocked it out. That was Bryce Jackson, the safety, delivering the blow. Yeah, Hilaire knew that Jackson was going to come over. It was the right read by Camden North. It just as I'm looking at it from the booth here, if he could have just thrown it a, a beat earlier, but an excellent job by the safety separating Hilaire from the football. They go on the ground to Keith. Keith is going to be stopped for a gain of three. That'll bring up third down with under a minute to play in this third quarter. A good strong run by Keith. A lot of jaw jacking going on out there, getting after it. Two teams that haven't been in a bowl game in a while. Oh, and yep, now we have we a go. penalty flag coming in. Here's another one. 
Yeah, this is where you just you have to control your emotions. We'll see if this is one of those offsetting ones. They call on both. And Warner had that holding call a few plays ago. Yeah, and the referees need to get in there and set this up. And you see <laughs> teammates getting in there. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 64. That is his second unsportsmanlike conduct of the ball game. He is disqualified, ejected from the ball game. 15 yard penalty, third down. So a huge loss as Bronson Warner, the right guard, has been ejected. And see, and he's, he's, whatever he's saying, well, he grabbed, yeah, you just cannot. Oh. Yeah, you can't do that. I mean, that's. That's the umpire. Yeah, you Roscoe just can't do Meisenheimer, that. Roscoe Meisenheimer, who got caught up in that, went to the, went to the ground. You have to control your emotions. Bronson Warner knows better than that. You just cannot do that. Not only do you get ejected, now you back up after the penalty, third and 22. Yeah, you, you just can't do that. New Mexico State will rush three. Still putting pressure on Orth, scrambling. And they still find a way to get to him with a three-man rush. Man, this New Mexico State defense, just very active, especially on the back end. Little twist up front. I tell you what, Sterling Webb, again, don't be confused with that 26. It's a 270-pound freshman playing defensive tackle. And if you were wondering as well, Bronson Warner got a personal foul or an unsportsmanlike conduct when Matt McDonald got hurt. So that was his first. We just saw his second, and he's out of this game. That's the end of the third quarter here in Detroit. New Mexico State with a 24-7 lead. Someone's going to get their seventh win of the season. Here in five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes in the app. Our Monday night football matchup features Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, and the Chargers taking on Jeff Saturday's Colts. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern with Monday night countdown. So Bowling Green will line up a field goal attempt. This would be 49 yards. Mason Lawler 0 for 2. He's missed from 49 and 41. Kick is up, bending back, and he got it. Way to bounce back, Mason Lawler. Yeah, nice little uh, draw on that kick. Looked like it was going to go right. And Took back in. Looked like one of your uh, five irons, John Schriffen, right there. I wish. Nice little draw. You're going to see, it looks like it's going to go right up that up, right up, right, right there. And then a little draw action. Nice back in through the pipes for three. Nice kick there by the young man. And that was big because now it brings it back to a two-score game, 24-10, yes. to 10, New Mexico State on top. Well, both these programs, New Mexico State and Bowling Green, are in rebuilds, and they're using women at key positions in order to get it done. There are only eight women who are director of football operations in the country. We've got two in this game. Rachel Phillips and Damaris Linker for New Mexico State and Bowling Green. you got Paulina Mihailik. She's the assistant director of equipment operations. She leads the way in the equipment room. Sam Graff is, leads the way for the athletic trainers. So three women in key positions for New Mexico State. Bowling Green, you have Damaris Linker and Danny Coppes leading the sports medicine department. Ball is out for Bowling Green. Did they get on top of it? Let's see. A lot of fighting going on underneath that pile right now, I can tell you that. That's just a little pooch kick that landed short. Again, it's a live ball past 10 yards, and they're fighting for it right now. Everyone's pointing their way. This would be huge for Bowling Green if they can come up with this ball. It was Mason Lawler with the pooch kick for the Falcons, and it's New Mexico State coming away with it.
Jackson Heal came away from the pile with the ball. What backspin? We we're just talking about a draw and a kick. That was like a sand wedge there backing up. Let's send it down to Tara, who has more on the women in key positions at both New Mexico State and Bowling Green. Well, you know, I had the opportunity to actually talk with Rachel Phillips. She is the director of football operations for New Mexico State, and I touched base with her before the game to kind of talk about the movement that's been going on there with other women being added to the staff. And she told me, you know what? I actually took some adjusting. Like, we had to figure out how do we act when there's other women around on the staff because she's just not used to it. But she loves it. They lean on each other, and they work together very well. Yeah, we'd love to see that. Jerry Kill said, in order to take over a program, in order to change it, you've got to completely change yeah. the culture. And he's using women in key roles in order to get that done. Listen, as a father of two daughters that have grown up in a football culture in my house, uh, I could see them uh, working at a for a football program. And they'd be OK hearing a lot of yelling and other stuff. You yell? Eh, occasionally, occasionally. I haven't heard that yet. Second and 10 here in the fourth quarter for the Aggies. Making a jump cut is Jones. He will pick up a couple. Mark this is, down at the 45, Darren Anders on the stop. This is a huge opportunity defensively here for Bowling Green, right? You got the three points, you got it back to two scores. You got to get off the field here. Third and long, you know, New Mexico State's been excellent on third down today, but you got to get a stop here if you're Bowling Green. On third down today, New Mexico State, 6 for 10. I mean, what a beautiful shot here. And that's phenomenal, 6 of 10, by the way. Ford Field, this lower section filled up nicely. Great atmosphere here on the day after Christmas. Third and seven. Pavia, pump fakes, gets the defense in the air. We do have a penalty flag as Pavia still running downfield. Eventually will slide down at the 30. But that's in the area of holding. Right now, it's a gain of 25. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be holding. It's going to come back. But that's what Diego Pavia can do. Holding. Offense number 51. 10-yard penalty, third down. That's the left guard, A.J. Vipulu. Yeah, the, the, the young left guard. We called his name out a couple times. Going to be on the right side of the screen. Right there, you see he's engaged and doesn't let the defender go was Darren Anders, 23, the linebacker he had a grip of. But boy, you got to be careful because, you know, Diego Pavi is so dangerous, spontaneously getting out of the pocket. But the right call, it was a hold. So a chance now for the Bowling Green defense to get another stop here and get the ball back. I mean, this officiating crew has been outstanding all day long. Third and 17. Play clock down to one, and he didn't get it off. Five-yard penalty. Still. And I know down. you talked about Jeff Stravinsky, the referee there from the Big Ten, jumping in here because Michael Mother Mothershed couldn't make it. This is a Pac-12 crew with a Big Ten referee. So before the game, I said, you know, your biggest job is going to keep these Pac-12 guys in line and they all kind of laugh but you're right this crew's done a really nice job you, you know people give officials a hard time yeah but when we see them through the airports we see them throughout the we year we see them a lot officials yeah. work so hard to make this college football game as good as it is today you got to give them some love third and 22 sidearm and Childress is dropped immediately. A loss of three by Jordan Anderson. And we've seen Jordan Anderson make a couple plays tonight. He's excellent at shedding blocks and getting to the receiver for the tackle. And finally, some life out of this crowd. And you talked about it. It's obviously heavy bowling green, only an hour away. And you see Jerry Kill getting after his players because he knows you can't take your foot off the gas pedal when you have a lead in the fourth quarter. That is the first three and out of the game for New Mexico State as Everly is on to punt this one away. And a short punt. 
It'll check up, and it takes a Bowling Green bounce. And the Falcons are fired up. Down by two scores. That was just a 14-yard punt. Folks, don't go anywhere. This game's not over yet. Back to Detroit. New Mexico State up 24 to 10 over Bowling Green. Well, we got the mega cast back for the college football playoff semifinals on December 31st. Nine different viewing options for each game. Got the field pass with the Pat McAfee show. Presented by Mercedes-Benz on ESPN2, it'll feature Pat McAfee, Robert Griffin III, Cole Kublik, A.J. Hawk, Darius Butler, and more providing analysis and interviews from the sideline. The Megascast lineup also includes the Command Center, AT&T 5G Skycast, All-22. You got home broadcasts on the radio. It is awesome. Bowling Green, first play, a shot. They've got Keith still on his feet. Ball is out. And Bowling Green falls on top of it inside the 10. Boy, Fatakasi, what a job by the offensive lineman to get on this ball. I thought Keith might have been down. And that ball was probably up. But watch Fatakasi, 53, come flying in here. Excellent job by the offensive lineman trailing the play. Great hustle. Trevor Brohard, the linebacker for New Mexico State, was the guy who forced the fumble. But now it is first and goal. 17-yard line. The ball be placed at the 17-yard line where it's first down and 10 Bowling Green. So Keith stepped yeah. out of bounds. So there was no fumble. They'll bring it back. And if you're Bowling Green, you're not too upset about that because it would have prevented the fumble anyway. So but when his heel comes down, yeah. they mark it. Out of bounds, it is a gain of 24. Yeah, but still a big-time play. You know, I thought we were talking in the break. It felt like a sudden change because the defense had gotten the stop, the bad punt. They might take a vertical shot. Oh, it was a quasi-vertical shot on first down there. They go to the ground with Keith. And Chris Ojo, the linebacker, stepping up. For the tackle, just a gain of one. You know, and Dylan Early, the safety for New Mexico State, was very active early. Five tackles in the first quarter. Hasn't had a tackle since. So, see if some of those safeties are going to step up here for New Mexico State. Bring that physicality they brought in the first quarter. Four wide for the Falcons. Second and nine. Orth with protection. Will throw underneath to Hilaire and Hilaire. Ball is out again. This time New Mexico State has it. Macy Camden North saying Hilaire was down. We'll get a good look at it here. Makes the catch, turns up. It's going to be first and goal. The ball gets ripped out. The question is, did the knee hit before the ball came out? We'll get a great look at it right here. Chris Ojo, the guy who ripped it out, and you can see the knee was... Uh, no, I, great camera work there. I think the ball was out. It was moving okay. before that knee hurt, hit. So your, your first inclination, John, is correct. Now, replay should stop and look at this thing. But I think, unfortunately, if you're a Bowling Green fan, that ball was out before that right knee hit. Now, we'll get a different angle here, but Chris Ojo is going to rip it out here. Let's see. Yeah, the ball's moving there. You see the ball start to turn before that right knee hits. Uh, this play's going to stand. It really should be confirmed because, to me, the ball's clearly moving before that right, right knee hits of Odu Hilaire. And I mean, and Chris Ojo for New Mexico State has been everything this year. And this is another real good look. So watch. See, the ball's moving there. He's clearly not down. So this should be confirmed. So the call on the field is a fumble. They would need indisputable evidence to overturn it. Yeah. And, and you think, I think it's, it's going to be confirmed. I think. I mean, they may say stands, but but I, I think it's confirmed. To me, the ball is clearly moving and coming the out. call. After further review, the ruling in the field stands is called. 
First time in 10, New Mexico State. The ball be placed at the three yard line. Be, be confident with it. You go with, go with confirm, but now they go with Stan, and that's the right call. The ball's moving. It's unfortunate. It was a good throw by Camden Orr to Hilaire. He just turns up trying to make a play, and listen, Chris Ojo, the linebacker, made the play there. Cyrus Dumas gets the turnover hat because he came away with it, but to your point, it was Ojo who ripped it free. They give it to Thomas, who makes a cut. Will rumble a couple yards down at the five. That play is huge because you could feel yeah. momentum swinging yeah. in this game. I mean, obviously, they score a touchdown there. It's a one score game. You got all the momentum. Now, listen, they're still backed up. There's a lot of time left in this game. Defense stopped them before. You got to do it again. You got to get downhill. You know, look for big number 11, Carl Brooks, who's going to be an NFL player, no doubt about it. Look for him to step up, make a play. Big guy. Brooks has 10 sacks. That is eighth in the nation. Pavia, he's going to take a shot. A lot of contact downfield, no call. We're looking for Chris Bellamy. And I believe there's a flag somewhere out there, and there is right in the middle. But great coverage by Jordan Oladokun there on the outside. Ineligible player downfield. Offense number 56. The penalties decline. It's third down. Yeah, Cannon Yarrow, the center in college football. You're allowed to be three yards downfield. Anything over three yards. 56 right in the middle. He's just going to drift. He's just going to drift. You see him there? It's a good call, and it's the right call to decline the penalty because you want, you want the down, not the yardage here. So third and third down on their own five. Pavia puts his head down and he takes a shot. Jordan Anderson, the guy to deliver the blow, and Pavia just pops right back and up. And that's where 11, Carl Brooks is going to come inside right there. You cannot come inside. You have to set the edge, especially with a quarterback like Pavia. You let him get outside with no one there, no contain, and he's going to turn it up. And that's a backbreaker there. You had him where you had wanted him. Just got to make the play and get the ball back for your offense. But Diego Pavia makes another play. On third down, picks up nine for the first down. Eric Marsh, the man in motion. And off is to Thomas. And he'll get two. Man, every time Pavia lowers his head, I got to hold my breath. But uh, this kid is just tough. In big situations, Diego Pavia has put his team on his back. Sure has. I just look at his numbers. I mean, you look at the numbers, and they don't, they don't really, they're not eye-popping, but he's made a bunch of plays today, and he's run this offense excellently. Excellent. Made the right reads. Seven rushes for 47 yards. He's picked up almost seven yards per carry. Play clock winding down. It's at two. Pavia gets it off. Will hand it off. And Watkins will bang forward to the 20, a gain of three. And we've talked about Pavia's toughness. Take a look at some of the shots he's taken all day. Well, this one was the biggest one. Watch this one. Ouch. And that was not called targeting, by the way. <laughs> But there was a 15-yard penalty. He's bounced up every single time. And then I just I heard that block from here as he throws his right shoulder, and they're probably ill-advised. And here's the last play. Lowers his shoulder to get the first down. Again, all-state wrestler, so he's a tough kid. No doubt about it. Pavia keeps it. And it's time he won't get away from the rush. Brock Horn, the linebacker, brings him down. And Charles Rosser was there as well. Just a good, aggressive play. And no face mask, just has him by the helmet a little bit. Good job not to grab the face mask or the ear hole, which would be a penalty. 
their roster there, 13. So the first sack today by this Bowling Green defense. It'll force a punt by New Mexico State. Eberle will come on and kick this away. Embry waiting as the deep man. And it's blocked! Ball is loose in the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback. The safety, excuse me. Davion Daniels, the man who blocked it. And I tell you what, Jerry Kill and talking to him, when I asked him points of emphasis for the game, kicking game, kicking game, kicking game, he kept telling us he's been burned with it before. Great job by Bowling Green, right up the middle, get the block, get the safety, and the ball back when we come back. The Quick Lane Bowl is brought to you by Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center, your go-to for oil changes, tires, brakes, the whole nine yards. Falcons band fired up after that last safety blocked punt by Davian Daniels. Now Everly, the punter, jumped back on top of it to save the touchdown, but a safety. And Bowling Green with 7-10 to play. They are still in it. And how about the defense of Bowling Green? Last couple times out got stops getting the ball back for their offense and of course special teams making a huge play a couple two really big special team plays obviously for Bowling Green today the uh, kickoff return for the touchdown and now the blocked punt for a safety so Albertson will kick this off for New Mexico State Big kick by Albertson. It is Embry fielding at the 20. Has a seam. Makes a cut back left. His helmet comes off with the hit. And he pops up. But an excellent return. Great field position after the safety. Forcing the free kick from the 20. And Embry hits it hard right up the middle. See if the offense can take advantage of it now. Oh, they're going to look Ooh. at that for targeting. I, I would be shocked if replay does not stop this and look at it for targeting with crown of the helmet. So they don't stop it. They didn't see it. Bowling Green, what a catch coming back. The ball thrown behind the receiver, Broden. But he makes the catch at six foot seven, picks up 14. Yeah, and he's one that Scott Leffler said it's going to be great. He just needs to attack the ball. Well, he attacks it here as it's behind him. Look at him stretch out, and he needed all that six foot seven frame to reach back and make that catch. Second straight drive for Bowling Green starting in New Mexico State territory. Orth, good protection, will take a shot, incomplete. Here comes the penalty flag. He was looking for Hilaire. Yeah, it's going to be pass interference. Hilaire's that vertical threat. Pass interference, defense number nine. 15-yard penalty includes an automatic first down. That's the cornerback, Linwood Crump, call for the pass interference. Yeah, he's just trying to slow up Hilaire. We'll take a look at it here. I love the play call. Take this vertical shot. He got to grab right there as Hilaire was going by Crump. Good job by the official, easy call. Orth looks over to the sideline, gets the play on first and 10 for the Falcons. Throwing, has a man, begging off defenders, touchdown! Tyrone Broden, a 19-yard touchdown reception. What a job by the backup, Camden Orth. Yeah, good throw by Orth. Puts it on Broden. And again, the six foot seven receiver makes the catch. Good fight at the goal line as he stretches the ball across the break, the plane. And we got ourselves a ball game here, partner. 
You gotta love the fight out of the Falcons. They regrouped at halftime knowing their starting quarterback would not come back. Matt McDonald out for the game. And the extra point is up and good. Let's take another look at that catch. Broden banging off of defenders, stretching out 6-7 or it pumped up. To the quick lane bowl here in Detroit, Michigan. New Mexico State holding on to a five-point lead over Bowling Green. Bowl season continues with four more games tomorrow on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the app. At noon Eastern, Georgia Southern and Buffalo battle in the Camellia Bowl. Then Memphis meets Utah State in the Serve Pro First Responder Bowl, followed by Coastal Carolina and East Carolina in the Ticket Smarter Birmingham Bowl. Capping this full day of action is Wisconsin and Oklahoma State in the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. John Schriffen, Rini Angolia, Tara Talmadge on the call for this fantastic game on this day after Christmas. Hope everybody got what they wanted from Santa. We're getting everything we want out of this game. This has been fantastic. A fair catch called for. And New Mexico State will come back out. But, Rainey, you look at this comeback for Bowling Green. It was sparked in the second half by special teams. Yeah, I mean, Teron Keith with the kickoff return. You know, first half problems, all right? We had the missed field goals. Not enough oomph on that kick right there. But second half, Teron Keith was the spark. Takes it back to the house. Kickoff return. Gave Bowling Green something to celebrate. And then the block punt right up the middle. Excellent job by Davian Daniels. Get the safety out of it. Gets you good field position, and you take that back in and get a touchdown. And it's a five-point game with 627 left in the fourth as we take a look at Davian Daniels. 26, had that block punt. Jones and Watkins in the backfield with Pavia. That's Brady, the man in motion. Pavia keeps it, will sling it to his running back in Jones. And he's dragged down for a gain of one. Yeah, Darren Anders, you know, we haven't called his name out a ton tonight. He's been very active this year for Bowling Green, a steady linebacker for the Falcons. Nice play there, read it, recognize, and react and make the play. And I tell you what, in this fourth quarter, it just this defense of Bowling Green just seems like they've turned it up a notch. Second and nine. Pavia keeps it. It is blocked, batted down at the line of scrimmage. He had Brooks in his face. Walter Hare, the defensive tackle, is the guy who got his hand on it. Yeah, we saw big Carl Brooks get in there earlier today as well. And you hear this crowd now. Exactly what defensive linemen are taught. If you can't get to the quarterback, try to time it, get those hands up. You know, Pavia not the tallest of quarterbacks at six foot. It's starting to get loud. And New Mexico State Time calls out. timeout. New Mexico State, their second of the half. Full media timeout. Coach Kill will talk things over with his Aggies offense third and nine when we come back. Join us on the ESPN app for the Capital One post game immediately following our game. And with 5.44 to play, this one is a long way from being over. Yeah, third nine, exactly where the Bowling Green defense wants to be. You know, if you're New Mexico State offensive coordinator, Tim Beck, you see if you can get Diego Pavia out of the pocket as you take a look. Jerry Kill never has won a bowl game. Looking for his first career bowl win, 0-5, which is surprising to me. And New Mexico State has never lost a bowl game. 3-0-1 for New Mexico State in bowl games. A big third and nine coming up. Four wide receivers set for Diego Pavia. Four field is rocking right now. 
Tavia will step up. He's got some room. Stretches for the first down. The ball comes out. Was he down? Darren Anders, the linebacker, brought him down. Let's see where they spot it. Well, they called it a fumble because the beanbag got thrown from the line judge. They definitely called it a fumble, and New Mexico State jumped back on it at the line to gain, so this should be a first down. Yeah, and so he reaches it out, but the ball hit the ground. It's a moot point because they recovered the fumble. So I don't think replay is going to look at this. But it was definitely called a fumble. That would have been an interesting one with replay, but no need to stop it as they recover it and get the yards to gain for the first down. Big play. That was a huge play by Diego Pavia. He's got three wide receivers to the top of your screen. Pavia will hand it to the running back, Jones. And a collision in the backfield. Walter Hare again. Tackle for loss. There's a loss of two. Man, he's one of the captains of the team. He's a great person, a leader. And I tell you what, they're just they're pinning their ears back, that defensive line. They're getting upfield. They're getting after it. They're making a lot of plays in the second half. Second and 12, they will give it to Star Thomas. He sheds one defender. Eventually will be brought down at the 39, picks up seven. Bryce Brand, the linebacker, with the tackle. And this is where Diego Pavi is dangerous, right? Because we saw the last first down, and it's, it's those broken plays that he just makes with his feet. But a chance once again for this Bowling Green defense. Get a stop. What's the key to accounting for Pavia if you're bowling green? You got to try to keep him in the pocket. And when he gets outside and gets into space, he, he's dangerous. Let's try to collapse it on him. And a penalty flag. Movement before the snap. Looks like a false start against the Aggies. And I believe it was a receiver, Chris start. Bellamy, number one. Offense number one. Five yard penalty, third down. And that always drives you nuts when a wide receiver false starts because even if you forget the count, just, just got to hold your water there. Just can't do it. Yep, right there, just a little bit there, and that's enough. And the other thing it does, it stopped the clock as well. New Mexico State, that was their fourth penalty of this fourth quarter. Play clock winding down. It's at three. Pavia just gets it away on third and ten. Flushed out. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to dive for it. Diego Pavia just gives up his body for the first down. And as much as we talk about it up here in the booth, him making plays with his feet, and Bowling Green knows... He still does it. Again, gets outside of the pocket. You gotta have contain on a, cor a quarterback like that. They lose contain, he dives for it and gets the first down. You know, and 14, Demetrius Hardeman had that outside contain again, just took that slight step inside. Pocket goes to the outside, has his speed to turn the corner, pick up the first down, just a backbreaker. How much fun is this young man, Diego Pavia? Yeah, if you're a New Mexico State fan, you're really happy to have this kid. The clock continues to run. Star Thomas. He'll pick up four. Yeah, so now if you're Scott Leffler in Bowling Green, you got to start using some timeouts. Time and I think, yep, we got one right there. Bowling Green, their first of the half. 30 second timeout. So Coach Leffler calls a timeout. Bowling Green with two timeouts remaining here in this fourth quarter. So it's quarter. very simple, right? If you're New Mexico State, if you get first downs, game's over. You're going to win the game, right? So they got a couple timeouts left. We'll see, but that young man right there, Diego Pavia, has been outstanding today. And oh, by the way, hurt his hamstring the last game of the year. We forgot to mention that. Was that about 90%? He 
it was it was good good rest for him three weeks um but still probably not 100 percent but sure looks pretty good Well, there's the starting quarterback for Bowling Green, Matt McDonald. He is now in regular clothes. He was ruled out at halftime. He's got the headset on. He's now a coach. All he can do is watch and hope his defense comes up with a stop here. Three oh two to play in this fourth quarter. Second and six for the Aggies. Pavia keeps it. That was Chris Bacon with the shoestring tackle, and Bowling Green calls another timeout. Yeah, and exactly what they needed to do. Get the tackle, get another quick timeout. Plenty of time left here. Just got to get a stop here. For those of us who are just joining us, let's take you back to the first quarter. Second drive of the game for Bowling Green. Starting quarterback, Matt McDonald, was already out of bounds. It was a late hit taken out. And that knocked him out of this game. That was Dylan Early who applied the hit. Yeah, and we didn't get a, an official word on his injury, but, you know, you saw him land that kind of whiplash motion, the head and neck area. And so you got to protect the kid because, that you know, he's as tough as nails, that kid. I mean, if, if his helmet's anywhere, he's getting in the game. And he's done it before. So, you know, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, take precautions because you just you got to protect the young man. Diego Pavi, he's another guy who's taken a ton of hits today, but he is still standing tall for the Aggies. On third and five, he is a threat with his legs. David, the man in motion across the formation. Pavia finds David, comes back to the ball thrown behind him, and there's another first down for New Mexico State. Outstanding catch by Cordell David, as you said, John. The throw was behind him by Pavia, but David, what concentration. Watch him. He's running an inside slant. The ball goes behind him. Pavia thought David was going to sit in that zone. Boy, what a catch. And I, and I almost believe Bowling Green probably thought New Mexico State was going to run it there, force Bowling Green to take that last time out. Instead, they throw it, and what a catch by Cordell David. What a catch, what a drive. Tenth play of this drive for New Mexico State. Prior to the ball being snapped, timeout. Well, the play New clock. New Mexico State, it's their third and final the, timeout of the half. One minute timeout. The play clock had gotten to one again, and so they were worried they were going to get a delay a game, so they burned the timeout. So Jerry Kills not happy. Now Daniel Pavi is going to say, listen, coach, I had it. Under control, I was just letting it run to one second. But, uh, you know, I don't know if we have a shot of Jerry Kill. But Jerry Kill just destroyed that head. That's set. a man that wants his first bowl win right there. There's no doubt about it. That thing was chucked across the field. So, New Mexico State out of timeouts. That was their third and final timeout. Stopping the clock at 2.20 to play here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, he's intense. He, he was like that before the game when we talked to him, and he's ready to go. And there he goes. He's going to put it. Look, he's trying to put it back. There it is. He got ah. it. He got it back. And look at the bottom. Look at the bottom. Watch the bottom where he is at the 50. Boom. Nice spike. And it goes again. <laughs> Double whammy there. And take that. Give it to Watkins. He'll be upended after a two-yard pickup. And if you're Bowling Green, one timeout remaining, at what point do you use he's, it? He's going to use it after the next down. So if you're in New Mexico State, you let this thing run. You want to snap it. You know, they've gotten it down to one a couple times. That obviously would be perfect, but really around three seconds is where you want to snap it, and then you get the stop, and then you call the timeout if you're Bowling Green. The play clock winding down. It's at three. Pavia gets it off. And gives it to Jones, and Jones will be brought down two yards short. 
And the clock continues to run. Yeah, he didn't use it. I'm surprised he didn't use it there. And obviously there's a method to his madness for sure. Because now you're going to be well within a minute left in this game. And of course, it's a moot point if you get the first down. The game's over. If New Mexico State can give it to one of their big backs here and go get, go get two yards and just ice this game. Twelfth play of this drive. New Mexico State on this drive is a perfect three for three on third downs. They need to pick up two here. Play clock is at two. Pavia snaps it, keeps it, sheds the tackle, and Diego Pavia has just iced it for New Mexico State. And it's fitting that Diego Pavia gets the icing first down. Great job, puts it in the belly of his big back. Zone read, pulls it, gets upfield right away. Gets the first down. And that man right there, Jerry Kill, in his illustrious career, spanning nearly 30 years, will have his first bowl win as a head coach. The Aggies in victory formation. Diego Pavia comes running to his sideline. And that'll do it. New Mexico State with a 24-19 win in this quick lane bowl. Head coach Jerry Kill, congratulations. Your first ever bowl game victory. And how about, we talked about it. This is a New Mexico State team that started the season 0 and 4. And you end up with seven wins and a bowl win. Outstanding job by Jerry Kill and his staff. And this is just year one. Yeah. Imagine what happens when they go to Conference, Conference USA, USA next season. All right, it is time now. Let's take a look at our Capital One player of the game. And it is none other than Diego Pavia. And I mean, how many first downs did he pick up with his feet, right? On third down, too. You know he's going to run it. You try to contain him, and you just can't do it. And he's just making plays, and that's why it was fitting at the end there that he picks up that first down to end the game. He had three rushes on that last drive. They were all good for first downs on third down. What a ball game, partner. Yeah. And give Bowling Green credit and Scott Leffler. You, you lose your starting quarterback, Matt McDonald, but you fight all the way to the end. Our final score here in Detroit, New Mexico State 24, Bowling Green 19. The Aggies win the quick lane ball from a partner, Rini Angolia, Tara Talmadge. I'm John Schriffen. Stay with us. We will have the post-game ceremony on ESPN+.